for doing it. I think that's what the emphasis has been on this week in practice, is just getting back to fundamentals and the basics and making sure that they could, don't come out here this evening and, and are flat. Western Kentucky University has been a great program at the 1AA level. In fact, they won the 2002 National Championship in 1AA, but now in their first season in the football bowl subdivision. Nobody say 1A, football bowl subdivision. That's where Western Kentucky is now. They'll be in the Sun Belt a season from now. David Wolke, a veteran quarterback, though, getting his first start this year. Going to be a tough start for him as well. David Wolke, 9 of 18, does not have any interceptions on the year, 84 yards completion. Keys for him, just play calm and relax and don't get frustrated if things don't go right. He has been in big environments and stadiums like this before having started his career at Notre Dame. Now, he's going to have to run from one of Bama's best, certainly in Rolando McClain, an absolute beast with 16 tackles, actually 15 last week against Tulane. He has really come on strong in his sophomore season here at Alabama. It's going to be his job tonight to make sure that everyone is aligned correctly and fly to the football. Now, the defense was in a week ago, once again, shutting out the opposition as far as touchdowns are concerned. But the offense sputtered. They'll have the All-American, though, back at left tackle. He's coming back in. Last week broke his streak of consecutive starts. He is needed to solidify that offensive line, make sure that communication is ongoing, pick up those blitzes, and, and, and make a, a productive offense. Now, we're going to have communication down on the field with our sideline reporter, one of Bama's best, Barry Krause. Hey, Chris, let me tell you, you're talking about the right combination now. We got Andre Smith back, 6'4", 330-pound offensive tackle. Nick Saban talked about it last week of trying to create consistency, trying to create that image. Every time you come out on the football field, consistently play at a higher level. Well, they didn't get it done last week, mostly offensively on third down. They were 3 of 11. Only 27% of the time did they convert, which causes problems in consistent drives down the field. Obviously, the points, you know, last week we got seven points in the third quarter. But the addition of Andre Smith will make a difference. Why? It's because he'll help establish the running game on first down. You know, obviously, Ingram has been running really well. If they can establish the run on the first and second downs, it'll take a lot of pressure off of that third down situation, creating better, consistent, more conversions on the third down, which creates more points on the board. Thank you, Barry. We will have a look at the starting lineups and the opening kick. It's coming your way right after this on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View. Warm but beautiful evening in Tuscaloosa as the Crimson Tide ranked 11th in the country according to the Associated Press plays host to the 2002 one double a national champions from western kentucky the hilltoppers in their final year of provisional membership at the football bowl subdivision level there is alabama head coach nick saban of course in his second year at the capstone nine and six overall he won his 100th career game as a collegiate coach a week ago as the tide held off Tulane, coaching his 150th game at the college level here today of course national champions in 2003 and there's his counterpart David Elson in his sixth year as a collegiate head coach, all of them in Bowling Green, 38 and 23 is his career mark. They've had 14 straight winning seasons at Western Kentucky. Of course, things getting more difficult now as they make the move up to college football's highest level, and they will be members of the Sun Belt Conference uh, in football next year and eligible for bowl berths. There's one of Alabama's captains, Antoine Caldwell, anchoring that offensive line, the all-SEC selection. Of course, one of the best in the country as well as he leads the offense for Coach Nick Saban. And that offensive line a week ago certainly struggling, as did the offensive unit as a whole for Alabama, but thankfully two special teams touchdowns able to lead the way for Alabama. As I said, a beautiful evening, but a warm one here in Tuscaloosa. 88 degrees for those that are unfortunate enough to be in the direct sunlight. Humidity rather high. There is a nice breeze. South, southeast doesn't look like much of a breeze when you consider all of the hurricane coverage we've seen from the state of Texas in parts of Louisiana over the last 24 plus hours. Coach Saban, three conference champions that he has coached in his career. Of course, at Toledo, the 1990 Mid-American champions. 01 and 03, the SEC champions at LSU. West Kentucky winning the toss. They've elected to receive. 
And it is good to see Lee Tiffin once again kicking for Alabama as he took a wicked shot and missed a good bit of the ball game last week. He got hit in kickoff coverage. And I don't know if he'll be as anxious, Tyler, to get down the field as he was a week ago. He might stay back in a safety, in a true safety position. When Terrence Cooper, number seven, number 20, Morrell Booker, the deep man for the Hilltoppers of WKU, along with Tyler Watts and Barry Krause, I'm Chris Stewart. Glad you're with us as we're underway from the capstone. Cooper from the three across the 20. Keeps his feet as he gets across the 25. He'll be drugged down at the 28-yard line, and that's where the Hilltoppers will start after the 26-yard return from Quinterrence Cooper. Courtney Upshaw with the stop on special team. One of those newcomers seeing action for the Crimson Tide early this year. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. There's the quarterback, David Wolke, 6'2", 205, and a senior out of Mount Juliet, Tennessee. 9 of 18 with no interceptions and a touchdown. His longest pass completion covering 18 yards. This is a spread offense that the Hilltoppers will go with. And Nick Saban talked about it earlier this week. Formation that can give the Crimson Tide some problems because they have not seen this look so far this year. First pass swung out to Darius Brooks as we take a look at the Hilltoppers starting offense brought to you by Tuscaloosa Toyota. There's the offensive front with Presley at center. Your skill position guys with good speed and good hands. You saw Brooks make the grab. Jake Gabler has been a starter, but he's out for the entire ball game with a back injury. A gain of four on the play, setting up second and six. Wolke working from the gun. We'll see this virtually all night long. Inside handoff and Dante Hightower along with Kareem Jackson combining on the stop as Morrell Booker gets the call and it'll bring up third down and short as we look at the Bama defense. Again, brought to you by Tuscaloosa Toyota, Greenwood, Cody, and Dederick across the front. Reamer, McLean, Hightower, and Fanny at linebackers. And the secondary has been strong for Alabama as well with Arenas, Johnson, Woodall, and Jackson. Actually, Ali Sharif getting the start as Bama went with a nickel package against the spread formation of the Hilltoppers. Third down and three. Bama offense has not surrendered a touchdown this year. They show blitz inside and out. There is nothing there. Great pressure by Bama defensively as Rolando McLean and Brandon Fanny combine on the stop. A loss on the play, and Western Kentucky will have to punt. First thir thir third and short for Western Kentucky here this evening, and Alabama does a great job. You see McLean just fire through the line of scrimmage, make the stop in the backfield. That's a good way to start this football game. And Alabama will go with two deep men for the first time this year. Julio Jones joining Javier Arenas, who also got knocked silly in the second half of Alabama's victory. That came oh. after he set an Alabama record for punt return yardage in a single game. And once more, he did that in only one half of football. But it will be Jones to fill it at the 27. Julio trying to break a tackle, does so, keeps his feet before finally being pushed down as he gets to the 37-yard line. Good field position for the Crimson Tide as they'll start off first and 10. The defense rock solid as it's been since the start of the year. Can the Bama defense step up? We'll find out when we return to Tuscaloosa. Western Kentucky University going three and out on its first series. The Crimson Tide defense, which has not allowed a deep uh, touchdown by the opposing offense all year. Bama did give up a kickoff return to Clemson to start the second half in the opener, but the defense has not surrendered a touchdown so far. The offense only scoring one touchdown a week ago for Alabama and trying their best to show the type of production we saw in the opener against the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, and I think it's going to come back to just being able to establish the run. They're going to do everything that they can to take the ease off of the passing game and just allow it to develop. Big reason for the struggles. Two starters were out 
on that Alabama offensive front a week ago. In fact, the offensive line has struggled to stay intact over the past couple of years for various reasons. The Tide has started eight different combinations along the offensive front over the last 15 games. You can see the numbers for senior quarterback John Parker Wilson. And I mentioned the changes. Marlon Davis, who normally starts at right guard, is out. David Ross gets his second start in a row in his place. Bamble will go with play action on first down. Wilson will have to scramble. Protection breaks down, and he will unload this one. He wanted to go up top to Julio Jones on the first play from scrimmage, but well covered in the secondary, and also a good push by the defensive front from the Hilltoppers. Alabama's offensive line, there you see the starters, Davis, Ross, Caldwell, Johnson, and Smith from tackle to tackle. The skill position guys, somewhat interchangeable, although Glenn Coffey is your starter in the backfield. Two tight end look now for Alabama with Nick Walker and Travis McCall both in the game. McCall more of an H-back as the snap goes to Wilson. The handoff to Coffey and not much running room on that right side. A gain of a couple third and long for Alabama. Let's look at the Tuscaloosa Toyota defensive starters for the Hilltoppers. Flying Clark and Martin across the front. 3-4 look defensively. Higgins and McBride in the middle with Boyd and Souders, your outside linebackers. And there's your secondary for David Elson's squad as well. Marquise Mays to the bottom of your picture for Alabama. One of three wideouts make it four for Alabama. B.J. Scott in the slot near side. Wilson looking to his right, though, completes it to Jones first down. Julio Jones rather quiet a week ago after having four catches in the opener against Clemson. Only one grab a week ago, but a first down for the tie. Right side of the offensive line doing a great job. You see Julio Jones' route right here. Western Kentucky brings the pressure. They saw the game film against Tulane and, and decided third and long, go ahead and bring the pressure. Offensive line does a great job picking it up. How big is that first down for Alabama's offense, given their lack of production a week ago? Absolutely. It meant everything to this Alabama offense. They need to get some sort of consistency, get a flow of the game, and keep the defense on the sideline. Two tight end look. We'll see that a lot. Mike McCoy in the slot. Julio Jones to the near side to give up the middle of coffee. Running room inside the 45, down to the 44-yard line of the Hilltoppers. Gain of eight on the play is Travis Waters, the free safety, who had nine stops in the first two games, gets the tackle. Hurry up look from Alabama, trying to quicken the pace as they'll go on the toss sweep to Coffee, trying to get to the corner. He's got a first down and more near the 40-yard line, and Alabama with back-to-back -back first downs. Travis McCall doing another nice job from the tight end position, applying the block downfield, allow Coffee to pick up another first down. Coffee will check out. Mark Ingram in to replace him. Ingram, the 5'10 freshman out of Flint, Michigan, Southwestern Academy. 28 carries, 161 yards. He's averaging almost six yards per rush. He's got a touchdown for Alabama as well. Tide will throw on first down across the middle. Walker, a nice catch in traffic. That one was well covered, but a big target there as Walker has his ninth grab of the year. Darvis McBride, the first one to hit him. What you got to have for this to be successful is quick rhythm throw, and John Parker Wilson hits that third step, releases the football before the defenders have an opportunity to converge on it. Was that the first option on that play? I, I think it's an inside-out read, looking for the tight end, and then you got you got the receivers hooking down, and then you're going to swing it out. Five-yard pickup, second and five for Alabama. Jones to the bottom of your picture. That's McCall shifting as they'll give it to Ingram. Ingram working his way behind that offensive line. Another first down for the Crimson Tide as we check in with Barry Krause. Yeah, you got to check out those uh, defensive backs, especially the corners on all the routes over Julio Jones. Look at the cushion that they're giving the wide receivers for Alabama. It's like seven, eight yards off the line of scrimmage. I don't know whether it's just a respect or basically they're, they're just going over top. But overall, check out the, uh, the uh, cushion that the defensive backs are giving the wide receivers for Alabama. Ten-yard pickup. On that gain, and Ingram still in the backfield with Jones and McCoy, your wideouts. Boy to the top of your screen as the give to Ingram. And he is tripped up, kept his feet, and fights to get back near the line of scrimmage. It was Blake Boyd, the outside linebacker, who came in and hit him initially, I believe. But that's a heck of a job by Ingram to get close to the line of scrimmage. 
well and, and uh, Ross up front do a great job open up the hole but it just closes down just as quickly actually it was McBride the inside backer that forced him out and then Boyd finished off the play no gain on the play as once more your two wideouts McCoy and Jones with Ingram the single setback flanking John Parker Wilson on second and ten looking for the end zone too high for McCoy like he had him for a moment, but Travis Waters, the free safety, was there in coverage to make sure that he got his attention. Yeah, Waters really stuck in a bad position right here in the middle of the field. Wilson does a nice job looking him off with his eyes. Ball just gets away from him. He knows he missed one right there. Sailed on him just a bit. Not missed by much, but that's kind of been the case for Alabama's offense the last five quarters nine plays 38 yards so far on this drive third and ten Alabama Ingram the lone setback with now four wide outs to choose from Wilson across the middle he's got his man Stover inside the ten first down Alabama Nikita Stover making his first catch of the 2008 season. Braxton Miller able to wrap him up, but not until he picks up good yardage inside the 10. Once again, third and long, pressure comes. The offensive line does a great job picking it up. That leaves one-on-one -on -one coverage in the secondary. Plenty of time to throw and complete. Senior out of Hartsell, Alabama, able to make that grab and gives Alabama first and goal from just outside the seven. Under nine minutes to go here in the first quarter of play, Alabama on its first series marching right down the field against the Hilltoppers to give to Ingram. Not much there. Bounces it outside, and he will score. Touchdown, Alabama. Mark Ingram on the eight-yard touchdown run. And Alabama on the board first. This is just great balance right here by Mark Ingram. Wanting to run it up the middle, not a whole lot going on, able to keep his feet up under him and bounce it outside. Ran into the back of Antoine Caldwell. He'd been stood up. Didn't find any running room up the middle, but found a lot of real estate to his left. He gets into the end zone. Lee Tiffin on to try the extra point. It's perfect. And Alabama leads 7-0. The defense forces Western Kentucky University to go three and out. The offense drives right down the field. Quite a start for Alabama. 7-0 here in Tuscaloosa. Tied head coach Nick Saban pleased with what he's seen from his squad so far. The defense forcing the Hilltoppers to go three and out. The offense goes 63 yards on 11 plays. They chew up four minutes and 21 seconds, capped by officially a seven-yard touchdown run from Alabama's freshman Mark Ingram. That's his second TD run of the year, Tyler. And again, two third-down conversions on that drive has to give this offense a lot of confidence. Yeah, I believe that was key on the drive as well because started off a little sluggish on first down. Not every uh, change of uh, downs resulted in a good first down play, but they were able to bounce back offensive line, did an excellent job picking up the blitzes, the stunts, allowed John Parker Wilson plenty of time. Great conversions. How about balance? Six carries, 30 yards, five pass plays. 33 yards on that 63-yard drive total. Barry Krause, nice start. Yeah, really nice start. You know, being able to establish the run as we talked about it, that consistency on first and second down, and obviously Ingram doing a good job, the offensive line. But I love the fact that the defensive backs are playing off of them, and it's kind of like catch and play, you know, pass, basically. Until they start pressing, I think Alabama should take advantage of those uh, defensive back playing about, you know, seven, eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Thank you, Barry. Alabama now 8 of 9 in red zone scoring this year. That's their fifth touchdown in nine trips inside the 20. And the only time they failed to score was in this field goal by a backup kicker a week ago. Tiffin kicking it to Cooper, who fields it out to 5. At the 10, 15, across the 20, and not one inch further. Once again in coverage, Courtney Upshaw, his second tackle on special teams, a 16-yard return, and what a hit from the freshman out of Eufaula. Just flying down the football field, never giving up, stops him at the 20. Talk about the fact that he is a freshman and a lot of first-time players, a dozen true freshmen, 15 different newcomers have uh, been contributing early in this season. 12 newcomers made their debut against Clemson. 
in three more. Jarrell Harris, Corey Upshaw, and Corey Smith did so a week ago. We've got a ball on the turf, and Alabama's coming away with it. Guess who? Big number 62, Terrence Cody. After he fell on it, they may have to reinflate the ball, but Bama's got it. Well, this spread offense can cause a lot of confusion, but when you dominate the line of scrimmage and, and Cody just bull rushes right up the middle, disturbs the entire play, forces the fumble. Perkinston, Mississippi native, 6'5", 365, and he worked hard to get down to that weight, and what a difference he has made for Alabama's defense and the offense taking over inside the 20. They'll spot it at the 17. Glenn Coffey in the backfield. It's he and Ingram alternated somewhat on that initial series. Stover, the top of your picture. The give, Coffey running room inside the 10, following great blocking right up the middle, and they'll bring him down after an eight-yard pickup. Travis Waters making the stop. Alabama is elected just to run right up the middle on most of their running plays. Antoine Caldwell, David Ross doing an outstanding job on that side. Caldwell just turns the, that nose guard, allows that hole to open up. Good to see Earl Alexander back in the lineup for Alabama. He's battled injury early on. He's to the bottom of your screen with Stover up top. Call for the lone setback. He'll get the call and he will fall forward. Got a couple on the play, but not a whole lot more than that. Johnson tried to pull around and create a hole to try to get up on the linebackers. He closed down before he had an opportunity. Got two yards. That was enough to move the chain. So first and goal, Alabama. As they spot it just outside the six. Just joining us, Alabama. Marching down the field, 11 plays, 63 yards on its first series. Western Kentucky turning it over on its first play of its second series of downs. Cody falling on it. Bama has gotten to this point. Quick pitch to Coffey. And that play never looked good from the start. That's a tough pitch, especially for Glenn Coffey. He has to take his eyes off the line of scrimmage and kind of look back behind him. we got to have a good pitch in order to let, allow him to, to take a hold of it and then get back towards the line of scrimmage. That's good concentration, but you're right. Western Kentucky was just all over that. Blake Boyd, the outside linebacker, first guy to greet him. He did somehow pick up right out of yard. Second and goal from there. Alexander and McCall to the top of your screen. Stover and Nick Walker to the bottom of your picture. Tight ends are split. Call for the lone setback in for protection. They'll throw your side as he's complete. Offensive line uh, yeah. looking pretty good, Barry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they are doing a great job in the interior line right now. They're trapping Western Kentucky's inside tackles and that's what's creating those quick hit holes but doing a good job you know the Caldwell the the center will block down on the uh, nose tackle get him driven out and they'll pull the backside guard and it just splits them right up the seam and then you hit them with uh, Ingram or coffee and that's why they're making those big gains uh, in the middle of the field Julio Jones and Glenn Coffey to the top of the screen five wide outs available for John Parker Wilson, third and goal from the sixth. Blitz coming, avoids it initially, and then throws for the corner and runs out of real estate. Trying to go to Julio Jones, and I say that, Tyler, I don't know that he was trying to throw it to anybody. Jones just happened to run that one down. I think that was a really nice adjustment by Jones. We, we talked about John Parker Wilson. Blake Boyd comes in on the, on the pressure for Western Kentucky, but he does not take the sack. He does not back this up and make it a longer field goal attempt for Lee Tiffin. So with the placement right at the 12-yard line, a 22-yard attempt from Tiffin, who on the year is four of five. His only miss coming from 52 yards away. Snap a little high. The hold is good. The kick is right through, and Alabama has added to its lead. 10-0, Crimson Tide turning a turnover by the Hilltoppers into points. You're watching Crimson Tide pay-per-view. Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide extending its lead now to 10. Lee Tiffin just booted through the 22-yard field goal. He was named the 2008 Lou Groza College Place Kicker Award watch list this week by the Palm Beach County Sports Commission. Four of five, as I said, on the year. He's made 23 of his last 28 field goal tries dating back to the Georgia game one year ago. A lot of pressure on that young man. 
being the son of one of Alabama's greatest kickers ever, but he is making a name in his own right. As we said, the 22-yard field goal capping a six-play, 11-yard drive, two minutes, one second, going off the clock. Fumble forced and recovered by Terrence Cody. Turning into points, but you really want to punch it in and get seven, but you take what you can and move on. Yep. But most importantly, they didn't create a mistake and, and force another turnover. John Parker Wilson obviously got a little pressure, wasn't able to step up and find a receiver, had the one-on-one -on -one coverage, just not enough time to throw it, but does a smart thing, gets rid of it. Cooper and Booker again, the deep man, as Tiffin will kick off for the third time this evening. Six and a half minutes to go, quarter number one. Last non-conference game to start the year for Alabama. We're moving into SEC play next week in favor. Again, it will be Cooper fielding it this time at the one. He's got some blockers, but the protection broke down quickly. Great coverage by Alabama's special teams, which were sensational one week ago. 16 yards on the return. Tyrone King, the first man to greet him talked about the defense and there you see what they've done against the rush so far and that's a great place to start rushing defense you got to start with that if you're able to stop the opposing offense from being able to run the football you're going to shorten the game give your offense more opportunities to score and it creates a lot of breathing room for you only three carries on four snaps for the Hilltoppers. That has resulted in minus seven yards. Of course, officially, Clemson held to no yards rushing in the opener at the Georgia Dome. Working from the spread once again, David Wolfe, the senior quarterback, started his career at Notre Dame, but when Tyrone Willingham was fired, he transferred to Bowling Green. Inside handoff and some running room across the 20-yard line for Tyrell Hayden, the 5'10 junior. 30th carry of the year. He's got a touchdown run this season. And the Hilltoppers trying to find some answers. Like it. Really like how they're spreading it out, though. They're able to create some gaps up front. It's up to the three big defensive linemen for Alabama to be able to stop it. Second down and five. They'll go four wideouts this time. It himself fooled a lot of the crowd in attendance because <laughs> getting hit in the backfield was Hayden once again, but he didn't have the ball. Still, Wolke got to the line of scrimmage maybe a yard before Rashad Johnson came up and made the play. Yeah, Bobby Green was the one that's going to take away the running attack, but as you mentioned, Rashad Johnson coming up from the safety position, playing hovering right around the line of scrimmage, is able to take Wolke down. Great story on Rashad today in Tuscaloosa News. The big fella moved. A lot of people stopped, but the play was not dead. So we'll take a look at the flag, and I believe it's going to be Terrence Cody jumping off sides, and that's a tough penalty against Alabama if that's indeed the case. Here's Penn Wagers, our lead official, SEC crew today. Offside, 62 on the defense, penalty five yards, first down. When you're that big and you make a great play, as he did on the last series, everybody's going to know it. But also at 6'5", 365, you flinch. Everybody feels it. Yeah, and Lloyd Presley for Western Kentucky, the center, is doing something funny. He drops his butt right before he snaps the ball. And I think Cody probably got a little confused trying to anticipate the snap and just jump. So the penalty gives Western Kentucky a first down at their own 30-yard line. Has been relatively mistake free so far in this game. I snap, but that play will be blown dead before it gets going. That is the 13th penalty on Alabama this year for 88 yards. Prior to the snap, ball start. 58 on the offense. 25 yards. Down lane one. So with the flags, it's a wash in terms of real estate, but Alabama's penalty more critical because it did give the Hilltoppers of WKU a first down. And David Elson, the sixth-year head coach 
38 and 23. A fantastic tradition at what was known as the 1AA level, but again, making the move to football bowl subdivision. They'll join their other sports as full-time members of the Sun Belt next year. Misdirection play, flags everywhere. Barry Krause, what have you got for us? This defense started off with like a base defense with two linebackers, you know, and the four or five defensive backs. Well, they went to a dime package now. Sharif is in there as the linebacker in there, and and uh, a lot of people were talking or asking questions about Prince Hall being able to play. Well, you know, McLean has really taken over a great leadership position with this defense and have done a great job, so they definitely don't want to take him out. But if you watch the defense, now they're playing with one middle linebacker and six defensive backs, and they're getting the job done against this spread offense. You know, the fact that you need more speed out there is part of it, Tyler, but also I've got to think these guys couldn't tackle. Illegal block. Number seven on the offense. Came back right down below the waist. Going to have to just to the goal. Down lane one. As we look at it again on instant replay, Rashad Johnson, the guy that was right victimized there. by that yeah. hit below the knees. And Alabama's secondary guys, maybe not the biggest, but they're strong and they tackle very well. Probably pound for pound defensive backs are the strongest guys on the field. They don't weigh a lot, 175, 180 pounds, but they're all extremely strong. They're fast. They're able to fly to the football. And this type of offense is exactly what you need in order to defend it. So after the penalty, they are now facing first and 28. Trying to just get a little of it back. And that's all they're able to get up to the 15-yard line. A gain of a couple as Rolando McLean and Brandon Fanny combine on the stop. Tyrell Hayden. Talking about all these different types of spread offenses. A lot of them right down at Auburn gonna throw it a lot, but this one we've seen a lot of run, a lot of miscommunication, excuse me, misdirection. You see guards pull in, a lot of misdirection. Alabama's done a great job using that speed in order to adjust to it. Cody out right now, and you've got Josh Chapman in. As Alabama as usual. Walks a linebacker up for a four-man front. They'll swing it out near side, and a nice catch made near the 25-yard line. That's Darius Brooks, and that ball thrown behind him just a bit. A nice job just to hang on to it. They've still got third and long, but they've just bitten off a little piece at a time up to this point. I think Alabama will be willing to give this to Western Kentucky, though, not allowing the big play. Johnson interested on that last play. What he's doing is coming up from his safety position at the snap of the ball, dropping down at a linebacker level, checking the run, making sure the quarterback doesn't run it himself, but then gets back in coverage, tries to get in those hook zones. Third down and 16. You see the numbers so far. As you've got Hayden back there along with Wolfie, working from the shotgun. With time, unloads it, broken up, and a nice play by Ali Sharif. Alabama got great pressure coming from Brandon Dederick along with Bobby Greenwood, I believe. And you can sit back and have any type of coverage you want when you're able to apply pressure on the quarterback with just four defensive linemen. It makes it so much easier of a job for the defensive backs. It was Greenwood all the way who was able to force the pressure. And there's Javier Arenas making two men miss. Another flags everywhere before and after the kick. Javi won't go down. But anybody that's got laundry, throw it on the field right now. Something for everybody, I think, on this play. Nick Saban getting the explanation. Brad Freeman, the field judge, trying to help him sort it out. Now Penn Wagers will tell us everything that took place after he talks with Coach Saban. Obviously, you'd think it was a hold against Alabama. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. That penalty declined. Illegal block in the back during the return on the receiving team. Penalty will be 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. So another great return by Arenas, but this one will be nullified by the penalty. And it will back the tide up. 3.08 to go here in the first quarter of play. 
David Elson still not happy even though he has finally had something go his team's way. <laughs> Still not bad starting field position though for, for Alabama. Only 55 yards to go to the to the end zone. So great field position for Alabama once again. Not backed up, able to use their entire playbook. See if they try to sustain the run once again. Too early to say a must stop for the Western Kentucky defense. I think every possession is a must stop for them. Play action. Wilson stepping up in the pocket. Looking deep, looking for Jones. He'll make the grab he's got it near the 20 yard line that's a great adjustment on the part of Wilson and perhaps on the part of Jones because Mays was his first option yeah and Barry Krause pointed this out the cushion that the defensive backs for Western Kentucky are given is allowing the Alabama receivers to get cleanly off the ball and make this type of adjustment John Parker Wilson trying to work the middle of the field steps up in the pocket he's got all the room he needs he can underthrow it Julio Jones makes the adjustment big play on first down 36 yards on that connection that is the longest pass play Western this Kentucky. year first for Alabama out. 24 the yards had been the longest for the Crimson Tide prior to that connection there and the Hilltoppers confused defensively so they'll burn a timeout right here obviously David Elson feeling a sense of urgency with his defense and he's trying everything that he can he saw on film hey let's apply pressure let's see what happens we more than likely will be able to get in John Parker Wilson's head this offensive line last week didn't do a good job of picking it up as well as the backs but to this point they have been pretty flawless in their protection and that's allowed the receivers to get downfield and make some plays John Parker Wilson's had a little time to throw the football, Barry. Not the same case for David Wolke of Western Kentucky. No, the challenge is, is that Alabama has decided to go with that dime package, and they're going with man underneath zone over top. And really, they just feel like they can match up man for man at the wide receivers and defensive backs, and that's what they're doing. Good job doing that. And all of a sudden, the quarterback has nowhere to go with the ball, trying to get a running game going. They can't get that going. So I'm sure that's a very frustrated quarterback out there for Western Kentucky. That grab by Jones, his second, covering 45 yards total today. As the give to Ingram changes directions. First time by choice, the second time he had no vote in the matter. Really didn't look like the pile was going anywhere, but he still picked up about five or six yards on the play. It's just a good push by the offensive lineman. David Ross able to get up on the linebacker. You saw number 74 on your screen there, really open a nice crease, allowing Ingram to pick up six before contact. Ben Souders, the linebacker that provided that contact. As Bama still got five yards on first down. Wilson, pressure coming, swings it out to Jones. Breaks one tackle and stretches forward for a gain of two, maybe three on the play. There was a corner blitz once again for Western Kentucky. Ingram goes over, picks up the, the corner back, and they throw right into that soft zone. Trying to get the ball to Jones in a hurry, see if he can break a tackle. And, and it's right in your face, so it absolutely, it, it, it's really a great call. He adjusts to it, everything is in his face. He can, he can adjust his, his arm motion to get around the blitzing corner. Third and... Long yard, short two, however you want to look at it. As Wilson has a power set behind him. The give to Ingram. He follows the blocking, stays on his feet, gets to the five-yard line, and boy, the fans love to see it go in the air. But in those third and short situations, they love to see you be able to line up and power your way to a first down. Well, it's pretty watching the pass completions and all, but these fans still love the fact that Alabama can run the football, and ultimately that's what you have to be able to do in this conference. So Ingram came in as Alabama's leading rusher with 161 yards on the season. Adding to that total there, first and goal Alabama from just outside the five. See Bama dominating on the scoreboard and in terms of first down. Ingram, some hesitation, then finds the end zone for a touchdown. Second touchdown rush of the day for Ingram, third of the year, and the Alabama offense looking like that one we saw in the Eastern time zone a couple of weeks ago. Mike Johnson's going to work up Antoine, or excuse me, Andre Smith just washes his defend, defensive lineman all the way down. That creates that cut on the backside. Ingram sees it and walks in. Tiffin on to try another extra point, and Alabama 
to be about as sharp as you can in this first half so far. The placement is good. The kick is as well. And the Crimson Tide now leads Western Kentucky University 17 to nothing. The Tide looking very good early. It all starts up front, though. Those are the guys that have to be able to establish a line of scrimmage. Here's a cut. Gets north and south quickly, though. Sees his, his, his seam, just walks it in. They make contact, but he's already five yards downfield before they ever touch him. And if you don't hit his legs and continue to drive, he is going to run over you because you're not going to be able to arm tackle him or expect to, to tackle him up high and drop him for a loss or no gain. Barry, I'm not sure you could get much more out of your team here in the first quarter. No, you got to be really impressed with the two freshmen. Obviously, Mark Ingram running the ball really well today, two touchdowns, but also the wide receiver Julio Jones doing a great job downfield at seeing the quarterback really basically out of the pocket looking for a receiver, how he broke off his route, came back and made that great catch. So two freshmen stepping up on that last drive. Alabama ranks fourth nationally in true freshman participation with 12 true freshmen seeing playing time so far this year. There's the drive, five plays, 56 yards, two minutes, 19 seconds coming off the game clock in this first quarter. And Alabama looking awfully good. Ingram with the second touchdown run. And Tiffin, a busy man in kickoff duty, his fourth kickoff already. There's Cooper across the 15 and he is buried just shy of the 20. Chris Rogers the first man to get him. Rogers benefiting from the blocked punt a week ago by Roy Upchurch scooped it up and ran it in for a touchdown. One of two special team scores that Alabama had a week ago. Give a lot of credit to Lee Tiffin also. We haven't seen too many kicks all the way down to the goal line but but every time tonight on kickoff he has stuck it within two or three yards of the goal line. So virtually nothing for the Hilltoppers so far. 16 yards, their total offense. They started that last series with minus seven. They'll go with a little trickery on the reverse. That's Taylor trying to get to the corner, and Kareem Jackson bumps him out of bounds after a gain of about four. Dexter Taylor on that reverse, stopping the clock with 34 seconds to play in the quarter. Eric Anders lost his feet in the backfield, otherwise he probably would have been able to make the tackle for a loss, but how about Kareem Jackson? That's just too long for any wide receiver to have to block a defensive back. He does a great job fighting off the block and making the play. Yeah, he's incredibly fast, is Kareem Jackson, as we talked about earlier. A very solid tackler as well. Second and six after the four-yard pickup. One of the best first down plays that the Hilltoppers have enjoyed tonight. A swing it out in a hurry. Catch is made and getting out of bounds at about the 27 yard line was Winquell Graves, the sophomore wide out, but Javier Arenas was there to make the stop. Now, Western Kentucky has the numbers right here. They swing it out, expecting good blocks, but Arenas keeps that outside leverage, so he's forcing the ball back upfield. That's where all his help is. Still elects to go outside. He's able to knock him out of bounds for no gain. It's a lot of work for no gain. That's a lot of work by Alabama offensively, defensively, and in special teams in the first 15 minutes. Crimson Tide looking good early. They lead 17 0 after one. Along with Tyler Watson, Barry Krause, Chris Stewart back with you at Bryant Denny Stadium on what's a gorgeous Saturday night at the Capstone. Alabama in the third week of the season, ranked 11th in the country and looking like it through the first 15 minutes of play. They've been extremely impressive on both sides. You know, defense really set the tone here this evening, forcing the first three and out for Western Kentucky, turning the ball over to the offense with great field position. We've seen a fumble, a forced fumble, fumble recovery by Cody, and just a great job of hustle by this defense. They're flying around the field, and they're a lot of fun to watch. They are indeed, and we saw a shot of Nick Saban We'll hear from Barry Krause in just a moment. You know he loves seeing those guys in the secondary play as well as they have. Barry, we'll, we'll come down to you while we've got a moment. 
those those guys in that defensive backfield real bit really being challenged by this spread offense yeah not only for quickness but also coming getting off of blocks and you saw how the arena is not only a great punt returner but a great job at disengaging from the wide receiver who's trying to block him come up and make an initial hit and get him out of bounds but it's a great test for these defensive backs and they're rising to the occasion they are indeed another third down as the Hilltoppers 0 for 2 so far on third down tries now faced with the third down and about three just underway or about to be anyway in the second quarter Wolke rolling the pocket unloading it beautiful throw and catch and that will be the first first down for WKU you had arenas there in coverage well, that throw had to be perfect, and it was to Darius Brooks, who may have been injured on that play. I don't know if he landed on the ball or what. Might have gotten twisted up, but he is uncomfortable. The throw, again, perfectly placed. It was, and this is a difficult throw for a quarterback. Rolling out to his left, he's got to get his shoulder squared up, and he puts the ball right on the money and picks up the first down. I still couldn't tell. I think I don't know if he got his ankle twisted or what. It may have been the case. So five seconds into the second quarter, David Elson's Hilltoppers finally get their first first down. They still trail by 17 here in Tuscaloosa. A lot to cheer about for Alabama fans in this first half of play and also good to see the injured player able to get up and walk off the field on his own, Darius Brooks. As we said, a gorgeous night here in Tuscaloosa. We have benefited from good weather while our brethren in the state of Texas and Louisiana have not been nearly as fortunate over the last couple of days. Five seconds into the first, or excuse me, into the second quarter of action. And you finally had something positive happen for the Hilltoppers. Their first, first down of the ball game. Wolke's numbers so so four or five but for only 20 yards that is the majority of their offense only 28 yards of total offense meanwhile Alabama's had 130 in total offense thus far well time of possession has been has been greatly in Alabama's favor and, and you know Coral Wilkie had hadn't had an opportunity to throw the ball down the field because this front four for Alabama has been able to apply pressure by the way that is now nine quarters of football without allowing an offensive touchdown by the Bama defense. Only the punt return by Clemson to start the second half in the Georgia Dome. It's the only touchdown Alabama has given up this year. On play action, looking deep. Ball is overthrown as he tried to connect with Winquell Graves. Winsor Washington fighting through that line of scrimmage, able to apply pressure once again. Wolke just has not had enough time to be able to properly set his feet and deliver the deep ball. Unbelievable. This defense that was really the question mark for Alabama coming into the season could be so good early on. Not only nine quarters of football without allowing a touchdown, but they have not given up any points in the first quarter through the first three games. Dime package in, six DBs. Ali Sharif is that six DB as they'll throw underneath and set up a third down and short as Justin Woodall was in coverage of the receiver who made the grab. That is Brad Savko, wide out, able to bring that one in for the Hilltoppers. There's Savko who made the catch, and it is third and a long yard. Wolf is changing the play. Plenty of time on the play clock. It's just now at 10 seconds. Snapping him plenty of time. Pass is deflected on a great read by Rashad Johnson. I mentioned it earlier, Tommy Dees of the Tuscaloosa News with a great story on Rashad Johnson. This is a young man who was an uninvited walk-on at Alabama, and now he's a senior co-captain. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing because it, it is the most difficult thing for a walk-on to be able to come on and have an opportunity to play. But the way that he has turned out as a premier leader on this Alabama defense last year as well as this year, that is an outstanding story. Selligent native, as you see, Javier Arenas, the deep man. Jeremy Moore set to punt. Low liner. 
that goes out of bounds around the 20 yard line. They'll spot it at the 22 and that's where Alabama will start. That's a pretty wise play. Kick it away from 28, but Bama will have it when we return. I mentioned earlier, Alabama ranks fourth nationally in true freshman participation with 12 true freshmen that have seen playing time this season. With that stat, you're not going to be surprised by this, but as you look at Rashad Johnson, he is one of just nine scholarship seniors on this 2008 team, and that mark is tied with Middle Tennessee for the fewest in the country. Johnson joined by Antoine Caldwell, Marlon Davis, Bobby Greenwood, Travis McCall, Will Oakley, Nikita Stover, Nick Walker, and John Parker Wilson as those nine scholarship seniors for the Crimson Tide, and that makes their role, Tyler, even more difficult and more important. You need leadership, and when you got only nine in that senior class that are scholarship players, that's a tough assignment. Yeah, but I think you got nine quality leaders in those seniors, and that's what a lot of teams don't have. Even if you got 20, 25 seniors, if half of them aren't worth anything, you're worse off. David Elson will take freshmen, seniors, walk-ons, anybody. He needs a playmaker right now for Western Kentucky University as they trail 17 to nothing. Bama three for three on its offensive series so far. And John Parker Wilson working from the shotgun and wants to go up top. He's got a man. It's Alexander. He's got another first down around midfield. Starting to spread the wealth as the Phoenix City native gets his first grab of the year. The wide receivers, they cross at the line of scrimmage, and that's going to cause a little confusion in the Western Kentucky secondary. Allows Alexander to get down that seam before the safety has an opportunity to come over. John Parker Wilson should be well over 100 yards passing now. I'll tell you in a moment why that is so significant. It's another record for the senior out of Hoover is to give up the middle. Nets Alabama about three yards. Glenn Coffey on the carry. Back in that Clemson game, Wilson became Alabama's all-time leader in pass completions. 511 career completions coming to this game. He also surpassed the Alabama career pass attempts mark against the Tigers. He needed 102 yards coming in to become the school's all-time leader with 6,206. He is just three shy at this moment, as you can see there. They'll swing it out. Alexander, he's got yardage, he's got a first down, and he's got the record for John Parker Wilson as well. I like what Alabama's doing right now. Western Kentucky is having to take one of their safeties and roll him to the side of the field, which is leaving just a one safety look, and Alabama is going to be able to press those seams. But John Parker Wilson here just taking what they're given to pick up another first down. Alexander, his second grab of the game and the season, but again, that one I'm sure will be announced to the crowd here later. Coming all the all-time leading passer in Alabama history. Most importantly, the offense just looks sensational. The give up the middle and a lot of running room for Glenn Coffey, Miner, and Waters combined on the stop, but 15 yards on that carry for Glenn Coffey in Alabama. Just picking its... its uh, choices right yeah, now. Yeah, I tell you what, though, they're really attacking at the line of scrimmage, though. They're pushing off, firing off the football. Baron Huber with an outstanding lead block that time, and it just busts these wide, these running backs in the secondary. Got to be fun to call plays right now if you're Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator for the Crimson Tide. Upchurch at fullback right now. Coffee dot in the eye. He'll get the carry. And he'll pick up again three or four yards, and there's just no contact until Alabama's running backs, whoever it may be, is three, four, maybe five yards downfield. Yeah, the offensive line is really moving that line of scrimmage. As you mentioned, uh, initial contact not made. Running backs able to pick up three or four yards and then see if he can break a tackle or two. Also good to see Will Oakley in the ball game for Alabama, number seven at a wideout. He came in on a previous play on this series. It's the first action he's seen all year. He's been battling injuries since the preseason, really battling injuries throughout his career, but glad to see him in the slot at the top of the picture. Wilson swinging it out the far side. Jones trying to break a tackle. He'll get near that first down marker before he is called. A six-yard pickup on the play, and I think Jones does have enough for the first down. 
Well, he had to get at least to the 15-yard line. Soft coverage once again for Western Kentucky. Watch Coffee just come across the screen right there and pick up the, the pressure. Nice job allows John Parker to throw it out there. Skill guys look good, but Barry, those big fellows up front are doing their job. You know what you appreciate? The fact that uh, guys are just stepping up, and that's what Nick Saban wants. When a guy goes down, he wants every football team, uh, football player on that football team to understand that that is their opportunity to step up. And David Ross has been able to do that, playing that right guard position in place of Marlon Davis. He made a critical block about two or three plays ago. That's a guy stepping up and making things happen. Sophomore from Homewood looking good. There's Terry Grant getting his first carry of the game and he follows a wave of blockers inside the 10, and they'll spot him out of bounds around the eight-yard line. So it'll be first and goal, excuse me, it'll be second down and three for Alabama from there. Yeah, we saw that play on an earlier drive, unsuccessful. Just a tall sweep out of the shotgun formation, trying to catch numbers against Western Kentucky. That time they're successful. So second and three after a seven-yard pickup. The line of scrimmage, the eight. Grant again in the backfield. Stover in the slot to the bottom of the picture. Quick pitch, Grant looking for room inside the five, looking for the pylon. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Alabama. Terry Grant with his first touchdown of the year, and Alabama pulling away early. 23 to nothing, Crimson Tide on top. Left side line of scrimmage, just able to wall off Western Kentucky, not allow, they can't keep containment. He walks it in once again. It's bad enough if you're the defense and you got Andre Smith, but it's almost unfair to put McCall and Walker over there. The two big tight ends to the left side. Tiffin's kick is up. It is good, and it is 24 to nothing. Alabama looking like the number 11 team in the country. 9.51 to go here in quarter number two. All smiles, and it should be for the home team as 11th-ranked Alabama holds a 24 to nothing lead over the Hilltoppers. The only hiccup, and that's just being greedy, is Alabama got a fumble recovery and had to settle for a field goal. Other than that, it's been all touchdowns. Bama four for four offensively so far. Been able to run the football, and off of that, the play action has worked. The drawback passing has worked. Much better job picking up the pressure this week by the backs in an offensive line. Three rushing touchdowns by Alabama. And the Crimson Tide with an awfully strong Nick Saban wanting to see his team step up and play solid football regardless of the opponent. He didn't care if it's Western Kentucky, didn't care if it's Arkansas, Georgia, Clemson, whoever. Take care of business at your position each snap. That's what he wants to see, and so far, they've come real close to delivering. And each snap is the key right there. You're going to see these coaches really getting excited on the, on the sideline, trying to keep this intensity up with their players because he definitely wants to dominate every snap of this football game, which means another 40 minutes of play. Tiffin. Could have tired leg, perhaps, on his fifth kickoff of the half. Fielded at the 15-yard line, getting across the 30, and now across the 45. Good running room for Bobby Rainey. Credit Tiffin for getting in the way once again. Even though he did get run over, he slowed Rainey down just enough. This will give the coaches something to get upset about. <laughs> a little bit of a lapse in the kickoff coverage. Yeah, had a missed tackle right there. Right around the 25-yard line. First time for Rainey to be called on. And now a very tough situation for David Wolke and the Hilltoppers. Trailing 24 to nothing on the road, and we're still early in the second quarter. hasn't produced much so far. And neither does that play. Josh Chapman, sophomore out of Hoover High School with a stop as Hayden may have lost a yard on the play. 
playing the nose guard position right here. He just uses his feet and his speed, able to get in the backfield, fight off that blocker. Great play by Chapman. Good to see Luther Davis in there as well. Big sophomore defensive end out of West Monroe, Louisiana. But Chapman, the first man to greet him, number 99. They do lose a foot on the play. Second and 11. They'll roll the pocket and complete the pass and getting the first down yardage. Down near the 40-yard line of Alabama was Darius Brooks. Good to see him healthy enough to get back in the game. For WKU as they'll move the chains for one of the few times tonight. Good, good play call this time by Western Kentucky. They found a little softness right there in that hood zone and they've been able to penetrate it several times and pick up the yardage. Two first down plays that come to mind, Tyler, have been very similar. One rolling to the near side, another, as we saw, to the far side of the field, but they may have to make Wolke more mobile. You're going to have to move the pocket because Alabama's been able to bring too much pressure in the back to get to it. They could give it to Hayden. And he will be picked up like a rag doll and brought down after a loss of a yard, maybe two. Luther Davis was the man there to greet him. Once again, the front four for Alabama just all in the backfield of Western Kentucky. And anytime you can apply pressure with just four guys, you're able to play those different packages in the secondary, spend more time, place more people back there to stop the pass. A lot of these players interchangeable on both sides, Tyler, but great that Alabama's been able to work in some second team guys this early in the ballgame. It's been a while since that's happened for the Crimson Tide. It, it has been, and it's been that way simply because Alabama has not taken care of business in the first half. Hard to build depth when you're fighting for your life. Wolke tucking it, running it. Picked up four, maybe five, but it's going to bring up third down and long. Marquise Johnson and Rashad Johnson there to combine for the stop. This is as deep as the Hilltoppers have been in Alabama territory so far. David Elson, the head coach, glad to see something good happen for his football team, but if they're going to keep the drive alive, they've got to pick up seven yards here, third and six on the scoreboard. Third and seven, though. The actual distance. You see the third down conversion number so far. Like everything else, favoring Alabama. Pressure coming. Unloading it. And an incomplete pass. Javier Arenas, he's fast as a return man. Pretty quick <laughs> on a corner blitz as well. And now a late flag does come in for intentional grounding. Yeah, too many people come from the field for Alabama that Western Kentucky cannot pick it up. And they're going to get Wolke here on an intentional grounding. Looked like he got outside the tackle box. As the ball just did not get past the line of scrimmage. And that's the key. It's got to be a pass beyond the line of scrimmage in addition to being outside the tackle box. It does. It, it <laughs> Stand in the pocket. It's got to go out of bounds. Intentional grounding. Number three on the offense. Passing right across the line of scrimmage. Loss of down. Fourth down. It's a big play for Alabama, though. First time we've seen them bring pressure on third, third down and long, and they're able to get into the backfield. Maybe grabbing at straws for the Hilltoppers, but at least something to build off of for the Hilltopper offense as they go to the sidelines. In that you were able to move the chain several times, you can get excited about that. But this Alabama defense has been very staunchy all night long, controlling line of scrimmage. Secondary's done an outstanding job. Moore also a busy man on the punt for the fourth time. You see his average so far. Jones and Arena Steep. A flag is down as Hobby Field get after the line. As usual, finds running room, and he is tripped up as he nears the 30-yard line. So a flag on the play. Could be procedure again. Penn Wagers, our lead official, set to discuss this one. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run. First down. Curious, you know, Western Kentucky is kind of spreading out the line of scrimmage. If maybe they're getting guilty of, of bowing that line a little bit, and one of them is being called for not actually being on the line of scrimmage. Six minutes, 56 seconds left to go in the second quarter, and Alabama's offense four for four so far. They got held to a field goal once. John Parker Wilson and company looking awfully good. Mixing in some new guys on the offensive front, including 
Tuscaloosa County's John Michael Boswell, number 67, now in the game. He is at right tackle. Wilson looking to throw. Deflected and picked off. Intercepted by Waters. And he will be brought down as he nears the 35-yard line. So deflection by Alonzo Higgins. And then Waters gets the pick. And the Hilltoppers take over in Alabama territory. Yeah, this is one he just forced in there. Too many white jerseys around to try to, to hit B.J. Scott there on that little post route. I wish he had that one back. That is the first interception that Wilson has had this year. First pick that he has thrown. And again, last week didn't have great numbers, but he still didn't turn the ball over. You can stomach one of those a lot better when your team leads 24 to nothing. But you don't want to have a letdown. Back to Will Topper's punt. Their defense takes it right back, and Wolfie will go to work. And they'll have to tuck it and run, and will be brought down on a great play. Brandon Dederick, defensive end, able to close in. A junior out of Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Able to grab him by the ankles and make the stop after a gain of about three yards. They're able to apply pressure, but they're also able to adjust. And this is just tremendous speed and footwork this time by Dederick. They're able to make the adjustment and make the tackle. A lot of fellows at 6'4", 287 may have said, all right, I'll leave that for the linebackers and secondary, but not Dederick. Great hustle to bring him down in a gain of three. Hayden, the lone setback, as Wolfie works from the gun as usual. Four wideouts in formation. Pressure coming. McLean forces him to unload it, and he gets a little help from his friends. Justin Woodall, the strong safety there in coverage of Terrell Hayden. But McLean with the pressure, forcing Wolfie to unload it. And McLean waits to the last minute before he shows that he's going to bring pressure. But as you mentioned, Woodall dropping up like, like Johnson was on the other side earlier, coming up to play those short screen passes as well as support the run. Lost three on the play. So back to the original line of scrimmage, third and ten for the Hilltoppers. Chavis Williams now in the game at linebacker for Alabama. Seniors out of Dora. They'll look, they'll throw, and the catch is made, but shy of the first down as Javier Arenas was there to wrap up Darius Brooks. Got seven on the play, maybe eight, but likely two down territory for the Hilltop. Yeah, but it, put, it puts them in an office with an opportunity to go for it on fourth down. Once again, they, they move the pocket. They know they can't stand there and have enough time to get rid of the football, so they're, they're being forced to move the pocket, put Wolke on the run. Fourth down and four. Hilltoppers two of three and fourth down tries so far this year. Alabama's defense. On two or four attempts, Bryant Denny Stadium coming to its feet as Wolke looks to throw, swings it back far side, got a man catch made, rumbling near the end zone and scoring on the play will be Tristan Jones. Great call and it results in the first points of the night for the Hilltoppers and the first touchdown that the Alabama defense has surrendered this year. He comes from the from the tight end position. He's able to just to get lost. All the flow is going to the left. He cuts back to the right. No support. Rashad Johnson bits as the play came to the near side of the field. But a great fake and a great call as they threw it back to Jones. And it results in not only the first down, but a touchdown as well. The extra point try from the foot of Zach Minturn is up and good. And the Hilltoppers have gotten on the board and Tyler again you feel from an Alabama perspective that you got this game under control the cynics however will go well we've seen this before things look good early then a mistake gives the other team an opportunity for momentum and it, and it all depends on how Alabama responds to this offensively they've, they've been very good all night long they haven't had any any issues we saw on that last possession though with a big turnover so how do you respond to that 
Does it make you mad? And do you get right back out there and want to drive the length of the field and put more points on the, on the board? That's what that's what Coach Saban is hoping right now. But that turnover irritated his offense, and they're not going to allow something like that to happen again. Take control of the line of scrimmage once again and march down the field. Orlando McLean, the Bama defense, they went almost 10 quarters without allowing the opposition to score a touchdown. Once more, Clemson scored to start the third quarter on a kickoff return for a touchdown. But until that connection from Wolke to Jones, no other offense had been able to score on Bama's D so far, score a touchdown against Bama's defense. Second touchdown pass of the year for Wolke. And the Hilltoppers get on the board. Jeremy Moore. Check that, it was actually Tanner Sewer who kicked off as they'll kick it short and Travis McCall will wisely make the fair catch grab. So Western Kentucky learning something that others apparently for whatever reason have not figured out. Don't kick it anywhere near number 28. <laughs> we figured it out. I wish they would kick it off to him. But that's good, good starting field position for Alabama. 30-yard line is not bad at all. They can take advantage of this with still over four minutes to play before half. Been out there seeing how many of the new guys are still in the game. So got Ross, who started the contest at right guard, but Boswell back in there at right tackle. Veterans, though, the rest of the way as the give. Goes up the middle. Coffee looking for blocks down the field. Finds running room. 40, 35, 30. He'll be knocked out of bounds but not until he gets near the 20-yard line. And it ever actually did get him out of bounds, I don't believe. He falls forward to the 19. 51 yards on the run by Glenn Coffey. Mike Johnson, Andre Smith doing a great job just pressing and washing that entire line down the field. He makes one guy miss, and it's a foot race. He knows he's not going to probably be able to outrun the angles. Does a good job of holding on to the football. Mark Santoro. The free safety saved the touchdown. Mike McCoy, the wideout, did a great job of blocking downfield. And Tyler, that's something you love to see as well. Not just catching the football, but your receivers doing the job run blocking as well. Yeah, that effort, that effort really shows up, especially in film study. Running backs will go and give you a pat right there. That really got him loose as well. You like to see, though, your wide receivers giving down, downfield effort. Julio Jones didn't exactly throw a block, but stayed in the way and made sure he didn't commit a penalty, he, which you often yeah. see also. And, and he's a big enough body where he can get in the way just by standing there. We invite you to hear the latest Crimson Tide football news on the Nick Saban Show, Tuesdays at 5.30 Eastern. You get an inside look at Alabama football from the head coach of the Crimson Tide, only on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. For him, is it almost perfect, Tyler? Because you're leading big, but your team made a mistake. Oh, they hiccup just a bit, so he's got something to gnaw on at halftime. <laughs> I think he'd have been able to find something even without <laughs> that interception. But I think he likes the way his players are responding to. They kind of took that personally, and it, and it frustrated, irritated them. They've come back out and had a great first down play. Ingram, the tailback, with McCall, the tight end, shifting to an H-back slot. Ingram looking for running room, finds it inside the 15, keeps his feet as he gets inside the 10 and is brought down near the nine yard line. Santoro again making the stop after a gain of about an 11 on the play. Yeah, Caldwell blocked down, allowed Johnson to get around and pull and do a great job of allowing Ingram to get up into the linebackers and safeties. Actually, they spot him back at the 10, so a gain of nine on the play. Second and a yard. Ingram again. Drug down around the seven, but that is enough for the first down. Robert Dark, the defensive end, able to wrap him up. Be surprised if Alabama does anything but pound it right at Western Kentucky. That offensive line wants the responsibility on their shoulders of getting this ball in the end zone. Three minutes, 24 seconds in ticking. There's a look at Andre Smith, and boys, this Offense looked different with him back in the lineup. Not the only reason, but it's helped. Ingram trying to find the end zone for the third time in this half, but he'll be brought down right at the one. I 
Alabama is really fortunate to have tight ends like Travis McCall and Nick Walker. Nick Walker just does a great job. You see McCoy there getting in the way, not allowing the defensive back to come in and make the tackle. For Alonzo Higgins is able to get him. Seven yards on the pickup. First and goal, second and goal, excuse me, from the one. The give, coffee. And that's a nice job by the Hilltoppers. They got penetration there from Souders, the linebacker. The first man to greet him. Higgins also there to help for WKU and a two-yard loss. Able to come from the outside linebacker position just all the way on the end of the line and able just to slant down and find a little free to get into the backfield. Officially a loss of a yard, so third and goal now from the two. Bam in no hurry with the game clock at two minutes and eight seconds to go in the half. Jones and McCoy to the top of your picture. Coffee is the tailback. They'll look, they'll play. Touchdown to Nick Walker. Wilson connecting. And Walker with touchdown grab number two on the year. And Alabama leads it now 30 to 7. You got your two tight ends lined up right next to each other. McCall's going to go in a little corner route. Nick Walker's got leverage. He's able to use the pick get to the flat wide open. Coming into the game, Bama completed 10 passes for 93 yards to its tight ends. And they have certainly added that total here. Well, start from the Hilltoppers. The kick is up. The kick is good. We'll see if they will blow it dead or not. I don't think so. I never heard a whistle. It's all sides. I think Alabama can take this on the kickoff now. Offside on the defense, penalty declined. Point is successful. Instead, they'll just wipe it off as we take a look at the touchdown pass again. Play actions is good. Western Kentucky's going to bite on it. Nick Walker wide open in the flat. Only one mistake maybe on offense, Barry, in the first half. Defense, not much more than that either. Yeah, let me tell you this. This offensive line, like, it needs some help. But I don't know if you saw, but Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator, he likes to use those tight ends. And he uses Travis, Travis McCall at 260 pounds behind those offensive linemen. If you watch him, he'll tam back and forth and go ahead and lead through like a fullback. And really, when you think about that four defensive line for Western Kentucky, they're getting pounded by the offensive line. And then you throw Travis McCall in there, and then all of a sudden he drives them down at about 260 pounds. So obviously the running backs are having a field day. If I was a running back, Man, I'll tell you this, I'd love to be a behind those offensive linemen along with that tight end. I'll tell you what, Chris, if, I, if I'm a defensive guy and I see two tight ends lined up right next to each other, I'm thinking, hey, they're about to run over me again. So to, to be able to have, have an offense and two tight ends that have the ability to not only block as well as they do, but have the, the speed and the footwork to get open on pass routes, that, that's just a, a, a dangerous, dangerous situation. You asked the question, Tyler, that Nick Saban probably was wondering about his team after the interception thrown and then the defense gives up a touchdown play for the first time this year. How would this team respond? Got your answer. A six play 70 yard drive that results in a touchdown as Rainey will get it across the 25. Keeps his feet and has suddenly the lights go out. Tell you what, Courtney Upshaw's done a great job in coverage. He and Chris Rogers that time combining on the hit. They have done so virtually every time on kickoff yeah, coverage tonight. Much better job that time on the cover team, able to get down there, not missing their tackles. Chris Rogers is able to hold them up before Upshaw came in. So Upshaw out of you falling with the stop in the Hilltoppers. Coming back out, they finally get points on the board, but it only took six plays for Alabama to wipe those away. 31-7, Crimson Tide has scored on all five of its offensive possessions so far. Four touchdowns and a field goal. Wolfie having to tuck it and run, and he got belted on the play. Arenas hit him high after Greenwood got him low. A gain perhaps of a yard. Actually, they'll say no gain on the play. Looks like it was just wanting to throw a quick screen, but too much pressure up the field, forced him to pull it down. They say no pain, no gain. That doesn't exactly translate the other way. Plenty of pain <laughs> no gain. for no gain on that one. Second and 10. 
with a clock under a minute 18 to go in the half. Greenwood giving chase, pass unloaded, it falls incomplete. And the, def the Alabama defense as a whole having a lot of fun right now. Yeah, he's just having to hold the ball too long. This defensive line for Alabama will see Greenwood here able to finally break free, fighting through the blockers. Never gives up at the secondary. He's doing an outstanding job, forcing him to leave the pocket and try to make a play. Chavis Williams, sophomore out of Dora, back into the game among those that will check in for Alabama. Bill Topper's just one of six on third downs. They're one for one on fourth downs. That resulted in their only 2D score so far. Play clock at four as they snap it inside a handoff and good running room across the 30 to the 32, but Rolando McLean making sure that Morrell Booker does not pick up the first down yardage. Timeout, Alabama. So Alabama will burn a timeout right here. That'll leave them with two and force Western Kentucky to punt the football, Tyler, and not use any more time off the clock. It, it, exactly. They got a minute left on the clock before halftime here. They're thinking of another opportunity, another chance to move the ball down the field. If it's the very worst, getting field goal range will allow Lee Tiffin to come on and put another three on the board. Got a little, little breeze, though, behind Western Kentucky, so they'll be kicking with the wind. But when you got arenas back there, anything can happen. Good look at Javier Arenas, who's been a busy man, as usual. In punt returns, as well as playing in the secondary at cornerback from the start. This will be the fifth punt upcoming for Jeremy Moore. Averaging almost 39 yards per punt and having to kick into a pretty stiff breeze right now. He'll roll and kick a line drive that Arenas will avoid. Javi <laughs> wanted to short hop that one and scoot past everybody, but a smart play on his part to take a little more conservative when you lead it 31-7. I bet you if Josh Stinson for Western Kentucky hadn't been right there, he would have done exactly that. Try to pick up another yardage or at least prevent any more yardage from being taken away. So now David Elson hoping that Time will work as a defender as well. They could use a 12th man on defense for the Hilltoppers. Alabama, five offensive series, four touchdowns, and a field goal. John Parker Wilson with a touchdown pass. Mark Ingram with two touchdown runs, and Terry Grant with an eight-yard scamper. That combined with Lee Tiffin's 22-yard field goal gives Alabama scoring. First and 10. From the 30, Wilson looking across the middle, dumps it off to McCoy, breaks a tackle. He'll be brought down after a gain of about eight. That will not stop the clock, so Bama will have to hurry to the line of scrimmage. Had Under 40 they, seconds had to they, go. Had Nick, Walk, Nick Walker down the middle of the field, you see the big uh, my middle linebacker for Western Kentucky getting back, so he does a good job just dumping and getting what he can. Second and two, Wilson stepping up. will dump it off to Nick to McCoy. Before it gets out of bounds. It's a pretty good read on the part of Wilson to realize where that line of scrimmage was. He was going to be content with the first down, but realize, you know what, I got a wide out. I better give it to him. Yeah, go ahead and get rid of that. That's a good job keeping your eyes downfield. Also, McCoy's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Some good recognition. Alabama able to stop the clock. Set themselves offensively right at midfield. 21 seconds to go in the half. You have your two timeouts, so you can work the entire, the entire field. Need about 15, 20 yards. Blitz coming. Wilson avoids it. He'll run. A lot of real estate. Makes one man miss it momentarily. Ball not loose, but they'll whistle it down shy of the 30-yard line. They'll stop the clock as they move the chains again with 12 seconds to go. Line does a great job. Now all the linebackers are, are vacated, getting back in coverage. He sees the void, is able to pick up about 15 yards. Pretty good hit that Wilson took there. But he doesn't mind taking the hits downfield nearly as much as it bothers you as a quarterback. <laughs> yeah. When you go in forward, it doesn't hurt as bad. This is when you're standing still and it comes from the backside or right in your face. That's when it hurts. Well, he was sacked four times a week ago. They hardly touched him 
in the game against Clemson. And they have just announced that John Parker Wilson is number one in career passing now for the University of Alabama. 6,241 yards, passing some pretty good names on that list. A lot of yards. Still got nine games, well, to go in this season. 11 of 16 tonight for 135 yards. So you saw his total yardage numbers, but he's also the career leader in passing yardage after two great plays, but he'll unload that one. He's had so many records, you start to lose track of them. <laughs> he needed 102 yards coming in to become the all-time leader with 6,206 total yards, and he needed just 80 passing yards to move into second place on that career list on the edge of the cable as well. So they continue to pile up, but most importantly, the lead is heavily in favor of Alabama. 47-yard try for Lee Tiffin. Right in the middle of the field. Snap and hold are good. The kick is not. Tell you what, that half just ended on a downer after one heck of a job by Alabama for the first 30 minutes of this game. Hard to find a lot to be upset with when your team leads 31 to 7. A missed field goal, an interception. And a fourth down conversion, the only miscues is Barry has the coach. Coach, you constantly talk about this football team, how important it is for their image. Every time they come out here play consistent football, is this what you're talking about? Well, this is what we're talking about. I mean, we've done a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides. We made a mistake on the touchdown pass here. Free safety's got the cut on the guy on the crosser. But uh, offense is doing a good job. We turned it over once, and they converted it into a score, so we didn't play perfectly. but. We're dominating physically, and that's what we want to do. Yeah, the offensive line, obviously, with uh, Andre Smith back in, it looks like they're really pushing them, pushing them off the line of scrimmage. Well, we're controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, and I think that's important for us to be successful. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Barry. Alabama, 31-7 to lead at the half. We've got a lot coming up right after this on Crimson Tide Pay-Per-View. Nick Saban's Alabama Crimson Tide, a 31-7 lead at the break. A good half of football, but it's something he has really talked about since he walked on campus. Dominating your opponent and also finishing, whether it's finishing a play, finishing a drive, finishing a ball game. He wants to see this team finish what has been a good half thus far. That's exactly, I'm sure, what he talked about it, it during the halftime speech is, hey, fellas, you played a great half, but it doesn't mean anything now. We're back to 0-0. Zero, zero. You play the game like that. I want you to dominate your opponent for the entire 30 minutes left of this football game. How tough is it to concentrate in this type of situation? You've got a big lead. You know that the outcome in all likelihood is not in question. You got to please that the guy, though. I think that's probably enough motivation, isn't it? And I think after a year of being under him being the coach here, that they understand that, that he's going to be the worst critic and the only one they really have to worry about. But when you are dominating your opponent, it's a lot of fun to line up. Heard him on his radio show earlier this week, and at the end of the program, he, he said, you would have thought that after last year, guys would get it. He goes, you got one more chance to get it this week. And if they don't, they're going to find themselves on the scout team. If they still don't get it, they're going to find themselves out of here. He goes, I want to say that to the fans as well, but I can't fire you. <laughs> he goes, I don't want to because you've got the best fans in America. But his point is he, he has taught and preached about as much as he can. It's time to start making sure that the people that are in that locker room are the ones that understand exactly what he wants done. And, so far, it looks like this team's getting the message. I think that they have understand it's going to be fun to watch them here on this opening drive of the third quarter, see how the offense responds. Look for them just to once again, though, come right out of the gates running the football. Tanner Seward 
one of two players that actually redshirted last year. Would have been their senior seasons, but he and Greg Ryan wanted to be a part of this first year at college football's highest level for the Hilltoppers, and so they redshirted to be a part of it this year. I'm not sure this is exactly what they had in mind when they opted to come back for another season. As you see, Travis McCall, he's been a busy man in returns. That's his second or third fair, uh, second or third return opportunity so far. And once again, the impact of Javier Arenas is felt. He doesn't get a return, but you got to kick it away from him, and he's able to pick up good, or Alabama gets good starting field position because of it. And I think that you're going to see more and more of that throughout the course of this year because the two returners for Alabama, Arenas, you definitely don't want to put the ball in his hands because he can just make too many big plays. First and 10, Alabama from their own 38-yard line. Five of six on scoring opportunities in the first half, and they pick up another five or six yards on first down, and John you don't want to beat Tennessee that Tennessee point Tennessee. into the ground, Tyler, but it is so important. When you're looking at second and short or second and five, it sure does make everything easier. It does. All of a sudden, now you can run the football. You still have two opportunities to pick up, to pick up the uh, first down before you have to throw it again. It just it loosens up the defense. They're not just always expecting run on first down. Forces them to get on their heels a little. McCoy in motion. But the give. Goes to the deep man. And working his way across the 45. Terry Grant on the carry for the Crimson Tide. He got the ball in the first half. And again, he is not one of those power guys. He's better in space, as Nick Saban describes it but he has earned the opportunity to get some more carries here early in the third quarter. He's also able to hit those holes real quick, though, and get into that secondary, and then he has created space for himself. You got John Michael Boswell in there at right tackle once again for the Tide after Drew Davis started the game. Wilson keeping it himself, but nowhere to go. That's a nice play by Darvis McBride, the inside linebacker. John Parker Wilson tackled by Came down and made that hit. Yeah, number 90, Dan Klein for Western Kentucky is going to bite on the handoff, so that's what causes John Parker Wilson to pull it. He thinks that he's going to be able to get it out there on the edge, but as you mentioned, McBride doing a great job coming up and making the stop. So a loss of four on the play. Second and 14 for Alabama, now back just across their own 45-yard line. Working from the gun, fakes the pitch, and now wisely just throws it away. That's good recognition on Wilson's part. Nothing there. Let's go get third down. You know, in, in, in Western Kentucky has made an adjustment also. We saw a lot of cushion by the cornerbacks in the first half. But now on that last play, they come up on Julio Jones and apply pressure at the line of scrimmage. And against the screen call, doesn't allow Andre Smith enough time to get out there and pick up the block. Marquise Mays. We'll check in for Alabama. Marquise in the slot to the near side of the field. Wilson with time across the middle. McCoy wide open, first down, 35-yard line. Tries to break the tackle and stretches forward to the 32 of the Hilltoppers. Travis Waters finally able to bring him to the turf. Going to work the middle of the field right here. Stover's going to come in and occupy the middle linebackers, and that allows McCoy to get back behind them in front of the safeties and work that entire middle of the field. Another great job, though, by the offensive line, allowing plenty of time to throw the ball. So McCoy with the grab. He had two catches coming into this ball game. He's had, I believe, three grabs so far tonight for Alabama. Yep, three catches for McCoy, and that one moves the chains. Grant not able to find any running room as he was met in the backfield by Dan Klein, the defensive end, able to wrap him up. So a couple of negative yardage plays as Western Kentucky's defense finally able to slow Alabama down. I will not say stop because they haven't been able to slow Alabama on a first down play for the last two series of downs. And that's really put Alabama in a bind because they've been able to make up some big plays, especially on third and long. They've continued this drive. Get up the middle. Grant inside the 20. He gets 
to the 17 yard line. There's some of that space we were talking about. He found it in a hurry. Nice hold this time here on the right side. Follows Mike Johnson right up the middle and able to get in that space like we talked about. One on one situation with the safety, Travis Waters. Johnson did a pretty good job at tackle last week, but so much more comfortable at that guard slot in Alabama with he and Andre Smith on the left side. Very, very tough. Run the move and then Grant as he fights his way inside the 15 down to the 11 yard line. Eric Jones, the cornerback, stopped him after a gain of about six. Nick Walker put a heck of a block here on the defensive end for Western Kentucky. Drove him all the way into the pile. And that's what allowed Grant to kind of break through there on the outside. Five different receivers have caught passes from John Parker Wilson tonight, but it's the running between the tackles for Alabama that's been most impressive. Wilson with time throws it away. Had McCall over there, but unloaded it as McBride. John Parker Wilson's pass intended for Travis McCall. With coverage of Darvis Travis McCall. McCall. But, you know, you practice these plays during the course of the week, and you're anticipating a type of coverage. So you kind of have an idea of where you're wanting to go with the football prior to the snap. Western Kentucky, though, kind of adjusted at the snap of the ball. He does a smart thing, just throws it away. Marquise Mays in the ball game. He's one of your wideouts. Move it to the top of your picture. McCoy in the slot to the near side. Julio Jones joins him to the bottom of your picture. That's Graham to backfield. Wilson on play action. Third down and four. Threw it behind Mays, and he still made the ground. It won't be enough for the first down, but it'll make the highlight reel as Mays, despite having a defender all over him, juggled that one and made the grab. Mays lines up in the slot position up to play action. He's going to drag all the way across the field. What a great focus that time by Mays. Bullard able to bring him down and save the first down, but Marquise Mays with another grab. He had four on the year coming in. Now Tiffin on to try a field goal for the third time. Fourth and a yard. This one from 25 yards out. Kick is up. It is good. 25-yard kick off the foot of Tiffin. His second of the night, and Bama does get points on its first drive of the third quarter. 34-7, Alabama adding to its lead on its first series of the third quarter. 11 plays, 54 yards, 5 minutes and 3 seconds. Elapsing on the clock is Nick Saban's Crimson Tide. Does indeed come out of the locker room, chews up a little time, and it winds up with points. Pretty impressive drive, bogged down there in, in the red zone inside the five-yard line, but we saw a lot of great plays, especially on the third and long situations to keep the chains moving. And if they had, it had not been for that, they would have been punting on a three-and-out situation. Alabama in the red zone, very impressive. Again, there's only one, one occasion in more than 10 appearances inside the red zone where Alabama's failed to score. That was a missed field goal a week ago. Cheerleaders getting a workout <laughs> every time Bama scores. Awfully excited, understandably so. The Tide rolling with 34 to 7 lead with 9.57 to go here in the third quarter of action. Bobby Rainey among the deep men as Tiffin will get set to kick off. Rainey and Booker the two deep men. Tiffin now with six field goals. With eight attempts on the year. It'll be Rainey inside the five. Across the 15. Open field across the 25, but he gets met quickly as he hits the 27. Charlie Higginbotham able to make the play. Courtney Upshaw was also able to get in there. Didn't actually make the tackle, but applied enough pressure to slow down the Western Kentucky returner to allow Higginbotham to come in. Higginbotham, the sophomore out of Mount Brook High School near Birmingham, and David Wolke, senior quarterback out of Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Again, 
He's been in this type of environment before, having started his collegiate career at Notre Dame before transferring to the Western Kentucky University campus there in Bowling Green. Brooks in motion, but they will now pitch it to him on the option. Tries to get to the corner, and he does. Gets eight, nine, maybe ten yards. See where they spot him. Nope, back at the 34, but that's a nice call and pick up on first down for the Hilltoppers who have really struggled on first down plays tonight. You have not found much of a rhythm here on first down. It's put them in a hole. Woodall comes up for Alabama. You think he's going to make the play right there, but just too much speed for Western Kentucky. A lot of, a lot of contact on Arenas as well. Week 12 Graves. The man that sprung him. Second down and three now. As they go on the direct snap. Trying to get running room is Rainey. And there's nowhere to go. That's a pretty nice job by Alabama as a defensive squad. Stringing it out. Kareem Jackson there getting the hit. And Jackson just kind of held on a stall block there. Did everything he could to force the ball back inside. Continuing to fight. A lot of pressure up the middle. High tower able to get in there. But just too much speed for Alabama. Yeah, that was a pretty good stiff arm by Rainey to create some room initially. But again, Alabama stringing the play out and able to make the stop. Rainey once more lining up at quarterback on third and two. Working from the gun. Rainey will keep it himself, trying to find running room, and he does. And that will move the chains once again. So the Hilltoppers go into a few new wrinkles in their offense and paid dividends. Alabama's really soft here on the right side of the line, not knowing what to expect. It's just a direct snap like a lead play. you got a pulling guard coming around to lead the way. He's able to pick up another first down move the chains. Tells you how tough it's been tonight, though. 17 carries, and even with those two nice pickups, 21 yards total on the ground for the Hilltoppers so far in the night. From the 40, they'll go back with Wolke out of the shotgun. Senior. Well, the look to his right, but swing it out. That's a play by Alabama's veteran, Marquise Johnson, a 5'11 junior out of Booker High School in Sarasota, Florida. Fall off of a block and perhaps a hole as we watch it again. He got a double screen called to both sides, so he, he has his options. But as you mentioned, Johnson just doing a great job recognizing the play, staying at the line of scrimmage and fighting off blockers. Win 12 grave made the grab, but... They lose four on that one, so second and 14 back at their own 36 for the Hilltoppers. Changing the play is the clock now is at four seconds. They'll swing it out near side, and what a play by Kareem Jackson to break it up. He arrived just as the ball hit the hands of Winquell Graves, and what a hit by the little man. Well, he recognizes it once again. The line tips it off. He's able to fight inside, really taking a gamble going after the tackle, but does just that. He had to fight off the block from Jesse Quinn, but Jackson at 5'11", 185. Talked about his strength earlier, and you saw it there. Incomplete pass, third and 14. Hilltoppers is two of eight on the night in these situations. And a showing blitz. Here they come. They unload it. Incomplete pass. Brooks heard footsteps and more and wisely said, why don't we let us bring the punter out? That was not going to be first down yardage anyway. Well short of it, even if he makes the grab. <laughs> Ali Sharif in there, he would have definitely made the tackle for no gain or possibly a yard or two, but would have forced the punt. Arenas and Julio Jones dropping back to see a busy first half for Jeremy Moore. His first punt of the third quarter comes with 7.36 to play in this period. A low line drive off the side of his foot. And even though Alabama is going to get great field position, Tide fans boo. They want to see the ball in the hands of 28. They'll see it in the hands of their offense when we cut back to Bryant Denny Stadium. Alabama leading big as you watch Crimson Tide pay per view. John Parker Wilson and the Alabama offense, as much as they struggled a week ago, they've been equally impressive this week. The half 
318 yards of total offense, including 135 through the air. 11 of 17 with one interception. But also a touchdown pass covering two yards to Nick Walker, capping Alabama's first half scoring. Titus had 17 more snaps and have the Hilltoppers. That doesn't always tell the story, but in this game, it certainly does for Alabama. Yeah, I like looking in that huddle, too. You don't see a lot of lollygagging going on, not a lot of guys smiling. You can tell they're really focused as to what the job at hand is, and that's going out and being productive on the offense. When play resumes, the title have it at their own 44-yard line. Good starting field position again. Andre Smith perhaps done for the night as Drew Davis checks into the game to play left tackle for Alabama. Boswell still in at right tackle. Alabama rolls the pocket. They connect with Alexander. First down. Down near the 42 of the toppers. And Wilson. Very effective again. Yeah, first time all season, I really, we've seen Alabama roll the pocket like this. Got a little stop route on the outside. Alexander's able to push off coverage against Minor for Western Kentucky and get up another first down. So got Caldwell in at center and Mike Johnson in at left guard, but Drew Davis at left tackle, David Ross at right guard. John Michael Boswell out of Tuscaloosa County High School at right tackle for Alabama. Wilson with all day. Now pressure breaks down and he will wisely up down inside the 40 to the 38 yard line got three yards on the play still see the veterans in there at tight end the stover will check out bama will go with a more of a power look two tight ends with both walker and mccall in the game earl alexander and marquise mays will do the wide outs to the top of your picture mays number four in the slot as the tight end shift, Roy Upchurch, the lone setback, joining John Parker Wilson. Hand off to the Meridian, and he will work his way near the 35-yard line, but it'll bring up third down and a long three from there. Chris Bullard, the linebacker, stepped up to make the hit. Alabama staying conservative, though, just keeping it on the ground, trying to wear down this Western Kentucky defensive line, and as well as just run the play clock. Third and four with under six minutes to go in the third in the tide. Trying to put points on the board again, leading 34 to seven. And a five or seven on third down so far tonight. Wilson unloading it, getting out of the hands of Mays. That one looked to be one of the easier opportunities that he's had, but couldn't bring it in. He would have had the first if he made the catch. Should have thrown a little bit behind him, he'd have come down with it. <laughs> the motion here tips off that it's man coverage for Western Carolina. So John Parker Wilson knows he's going to have the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Mays crossing across the field. It's just a foot race. He puts it out there. Unfortunately, he's unable to bring it in. It was just slightly behind him, but not able to make the catch that he'll tell you he should have made. Bama's going to go for it on fourth down and four. Kind of in between right here. I think the wind has indeed shifted, and it would have been a lengthy try into the wind, so Bama will go for it on fourth and four. Wilson with time, goes back to Mays. He's got the grab. He's got a first down. He will be knocked out of bounds inside the 15. The 13 yard line, and you love that going right back to the young man who just had to drop the play before. Yeah, Western Carolina is going to run what we call a cross at stun with the middle linebackers right up the gut. And when they leave that area, that leaves a void right over the middle for Mays to cross. 22 yards on the game. Earl Alex, yeah, Earl Alexander, great job blocking downfield. So the line of scrimmage just outside the 12. Stover in the slot with Alexander, the wide out to the near side. Is up church in the backfield with Wilson looking out there and threw it right in the chest of the linebacker. And thankfully, he had the hands of a linebacker, Blake Boyd. His old zone blitz that caused so much problems in the NFL. You think he got a rush coming on at the last second, he drops off in the flat. It's a great play by Boyd. But John Parker Wilson's thinking, you ain't supposed to be there. <laughs> But he was. 
unfortunately for Alabama, he couldn't make the grab. By the way, that catch by Mays, the sixth different receiver, with a reception tonight. Second and ten from outside the 12. Wilson complete. Jones breaks the tackle. In zone touchdown. Julio Jones with his second touchdown grab of the season. And Alabama now leads it 40 to 7. Eric Jones with the one-on-one -on -one coverage for Western Kentucky. Ball thrown right where it's supposed to be on the outside shoulder. Jones is able to spin to the outside, use that lower body strength to walk in for a touchdown. Tyler, that's the 34th time tonight. Alabama has thrown a pass very similar to that. They've run a route similar to try to get him to break the tackle. That time he was able to do so and find the end zone. And something comes on. I'll try another extra point. This one is true, and Alabama has rolled out to a 41-7 to lead. It was 31-7 at the break. Bama's tacked on 10 more and looking good here at home. 4.57 to go in the third. John Parker Wilson, Julio Jones, adds to Bama's lead. Julio Jones with the touchdown grab, and Alabama adds to its lead, 41-7. to I'm Chris Stewart, along with Tyler Watts, down on the sidelines. He's Barry Krause. Hey, Chris, you got to be real impressed with this offense. All of a sudden, moving the ball down the field, everything working, offensive line. But uh, everything was fine up until you said something about linebackers with typical hands. Uh, come on, man. I had good hands. Look, I got good hands. I never dropped a, a one pass. But, I, but most of the time, you know, it's actually a surprise sometimes and I guess it surprised him. But I'll tell you this, the offense for Alabama, you know, let me tell you this, this is what Alabama football is all about. It's dominating at the line of scrimmage. That's what they've been able to do. Andre Smith has made the difference. Now they're starting to rotate some other guys in there, but it's great to see the offense for Alabama finally being the offense that we expect. And Barry, to see this team dominate and be able to work new guys in as we have seen and will continue to see, so important, I know, for this team. Oh, it's huge because when you're talking about this offensive line and also defensive line, you're talking about lack of depth. And so anytime you can get these guys in there, David Ross has really stepped up, which is really impressive. But anytime you can get some backup guys, an opportunity to get some, you know, obviously full speed game kind of situation, uh, you know, experience, that's awesome because you need these guys to be able to have that confidence along that line, that offensive line, to step in and make things happen. Speaking of newcomers, it's not that new, but Greg McElroy starting to loosen on the Bama sidelines as Stephen Willis gets his first return of the night. He gets corralled across the 20-yard line. Eric Anders making the stop in special teams. There you see McElroy, the sophomore out of South Lake, Texas, Carroll High School, where he helped lead his squad to a state title. Eight of nine in his career for 73 yards and a touchdown. Did that last year early on, but Tyler, it's not just the quarterback position. It's across the board. Alabama's had too few games like this where you could really afford to work in second, third string guys in crucial situations. Yeah, and they're going to get some good looks because there's still over almost five minutes left to go in the third quarter, so Western Kentucky is not going to pull off. Wolfie rolling the pocket again, unloads it, but short hops the intended receiver with Terrence Cooper, Lorenzo Washington providing the pressure and forcing him to unload it. <laughs> Pretty much seeing changes across the board on the defensive side as well. Green Jackson still in the in the ball game, but you see McLean out and the entire defensive line has been substituted for Luther Davis is in. Courtney Jackson in there, excuse me, Courtney Upshaw, number 41, in at the Jack linebacker. He'll walk up almost as a fourth down lineman. See him there at the near side at in. The movement by Cody Hughes. Clark with the snap. Ball start. Number 70 on the offense, only five yards, down remains second. Charlie Higginbotham in at a linebacker. So again, we're going to see some names that may be familiar, but more on special teams and very rarely, just look at the penalty numbers, have you seen these guys in a ball game midway through the third quarter? Again, nice to be able to mix them in with other starters for Alabama. It's Nick Saban and the staff try to build some depth. And Alabama's had very little of the last few seasons. 
throw down field is caught. That's Winquell Graves making the grab across the 35-yard line. That's first down as they're able to drop that one over the head of Marquise Johnson. Yeah, just a good play by Western Kentucky, and these are two starters right here that they're picking on. Johnson coming in from the cornerback and Johnson from the safety position. Dropped it in perfectly there, a 19-yard pickup for the Hilltoppers. So they're faced with first down now from just across their own 35-yard line. A good score on a fourth down play. 30-yard touchdown strike. That's the only offensive touchdown the Bama defense has surrendered on the year as connection with Graves again results in good yardage before Justin Woodall makes the stop. That's going to be very close to a first down again. In fact, it is enough. Western Kentucky tried to run this play earlier on previous possessions. This time, Jesse Quinn, number 81 for Western Kentucky, is able to, to knock Kareem Jackson off the ball and allow the play to develop. 11 yards on the gain, so they'll move the sticks again. Here their own 47, Wolke from the gun. 3.50 and ticking, time left third quarter here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Swinging out in a hurry, Brooks. It'll pick up a couple of yards, or will they spot him out of bounds back near the line of scrimmage? Rashad Johnson and Ali Sharif combining, also Kareem Jackson there. Saban's Crimson Tide scoring on its first five offensive series. Would have been six for six, but they missed a field goal to end the half. Second and eight. They'll swing it out again. Got a man. Catch is made. Ball's not loose, but it falls out of bounds. It was Jesse Quinn who made the grab, the senior. Three catches, 39 yards through the first two weeks. Johnson playing this play just like he's supposed to. He's got two threats right here. He's kind of playing right in the middle. He's expecting Woodall to come over the top and help him out. But I tell you what, Wolke makes a great throw right there. He leads, he leads him down the field. The play is probably intercepted. But both the receiver and the quarterback for Western Kentucky know right where that soft part of the zone is. This had not been a 41 to 7 Alabama lead. They may have at least reviewed that play. I'm not completely convinced he had possession before he lost it out of bounds. Forward from will not allow. They did bring it back to the spot that he dropped the football as Wolke will lose a yard on the play. Courtney Upshaw there to make the stop for the Crimson Tide. That's a nice job coming off the corner there. Never giving up. Fight forward. Play really had no chance of being successful. See what Bama's rushing defense has been like. Almost impossible to run on for the first three opponents. That is outside of SEC play. The test will get tougher beginning next week. Hopefully the hits will keep on coming like that one from Justin Woodall. Planted Winquell Graves and knocked away any shot he had of making the grab as we watch it again. Arenas is going to bring pressure, and that forces the ball a little bit high and allows Woodall enough time to get there and knock it loose. He heard him before he felt him, but Woodall was able to make the hit. So third and 11 of them. So the Hilltoppers facing third and 11. A blitz coming. Wolke steps past it. He'll keep it himself. He'll get a block to get a first down and more before he's bumped out of bounds. Rashad Johnson sending him to the boundary, but not until they pick up the first down. And that's a nice read and a great athletic play by Wolke. Yeah, I tell you what, he really avoided a bad situation right here. Woodall comes on the safety blitz, nicely picked up, but when he does, that vacates the field. Wolke's able to pull it down for good yardage. That yeah, was Terrell Hayden. He was able to get the shot, the uh, pickup of the blitz. Tyrone King has checked in for Alabama in the secondary. First and 10, Hilltoppers inside the Bama 30. And the show's blitz. They'll come with it. 
Kane gets in his face and forces Wolke to throw it away. That's a heck of a throw from the near hash on his heels by Wolke. Yeah, heads up play right here. You're starting to see Alabama really mix it up and apply a lot more pressure than we saw in the first half. Great job defensively there by King, the junior out of Birmingham, a transfer from Grambling. 5'11", 204. Second and 10 upcoming for the Hilltoppers. David Wolke. In the gun as he's been all night, 14 of 22 through the air for 116 yards. They'll hand it off, and Hayden will fall forward to the 25-yard line. It'll you know, be third and long from there. Courtney Upshaw didn't make the tackle on that last play, but you talk about playing assignment football. He's at the backside end. He comes in. He doesn't bite down on the, on the give. He goes directly for the quarterback, which is his responsibility. Gets a good knock on him as well. A lot of quarterbacks, they see that end coming back down. He's going to pull it and run around in, but Courtney Upshaw plays his assignment. Three of ten tonight for Western Kentucky University. third down they'll look deep and it's knocked away on a great play by the Crimson Tides Rashad Johnson playing as though Bama is trailing by a field goal rather than leading 41 to 7. Western Kentucky threw this corner route and picked up a big third down conversion earlier in the drive plays there once again but Rashad Johnson makes a great break on it. We had Darius Brooks but as you said Rashad Johnson able to step up, knock it away at the last moment. Now fourth down and seven. Last time they were faced with fourth down and went forth, they scored a touchdown. It was about five yards further back than they are right now. Wolke looking, throwing, pass is picked off. Yes, it is. Bama football as Justin Woodall gets the interception. He had a pass breakup earlier in the year, but it gets the pick there, and Alabama will take over. Western Kentucky ran this play earlier on the drive and found a great little hold there, but this time Woodall goes over the top of it, able to come down with the interception. Nice job of reading the eyes, adjusting to the football. John Parker Wilson's night is done. Enter. Greg McElroy, the sophomore out of Carroll High School in South Lake, Texas, his first action of the year. He'll have some company as far as newcomers are concerned. We'll run through several of them for you as we go on. Terry Grant getting the carry. <laughs> Trying to see who all is in there now on the offensive front. Brian Motley in at a guard. William Vallejos also into the ball game on the offensive front. 6'1 sophomore out of Mountain Brook. There's also one of the new incoming tight ends, Chris Underwood, number 87. Freshman out of Vestavia Hills will give you some other new names when we come back. Three quarters are complete, and Alabama has looked awfully good tonight. They lead the Hilltoppers 41 to 7 going to the fourth. John Parker Wilson done for the night, but a nice way to exit. He adds his name to the record books once again. Career touchdowns now tied with Brody Croyle with 41. After that completion to Julio Jones earlier in the third quarter. Again, in some good company. Wilson, the career passing yards leader, total yards leader, and tied for the most career touchdown passes in Alabama football history. And now Greg McElroy in the game, as we told you, eight of nine, no interceptions for his career. 73 yards total, a touchdown. And he gets a chance to work with some other fresh faces in the game. Darius Hanks, six foot, 
sophomore out of Norcross, Georgia. Number 15 also in at wide out. Veteran Nikita Stover is in as a wide out in the slot to the top of the screen. Quick pitch to Grant. Trying to keep his feet, but nowhere to go. Evan Cardwell was trying to pick him up and throw him towards the line of scrimmage, but that didn't work either. Trying to help, just too much penetration there on the left side of the line of scrimmage for that play to develop fully. Terry Grant just has to take what he can. Ryan Motley in the game, sophomore out of Otogville. John Michael Boswell out of Northport, Alabama. Nearby Tuscaloosa County High, William Vallejos from Mountain Brook. Evan Cardwell, Drew Davis in there as well on the offensive front. Will Oakley in the game. Out of wide out, he's in motion. Florida native as McElroy will dump it off. Grant on third and long, trying to turn it upfield, and he does. Does he stay in bounds? He does indeed, he's got a first down. I thought he might run out of real estate, Tyler, but a great job of staying inside the boundary and picking up the first down. Yeah, walking the tight rope right here on the, the sideline. He's got the blockers out front. It's a great job of the offensive line getting out in front of him, applying blocks downfield. See right there, Motley, nice job blocking. And he just walks to the sideline all the way for a first down. Boy, Upchurch will check in as Grant checks out, and he was holding his right hand, it looked like. At the end of that play, they'll work on him on the Bama bench as Upchurch is your lone setback. Play action, McElroy to throw. Steps up against pressure. The fires his strike to Darius Hanks near midfield. The grab for Hanks, his first in an Alabama uniform. And the Crimson Tide moves the chains again after an 18-yard pickup. McElroy, McElroy does a great job right here keeping his feet up under him. He's balanced throughout. He steps up in the pocket, knows where he's going with the ball and delivers a strike. 18 yards on the Great to see these guys not only get an opportunity to play Tyler, but have some success once they do so. Yeah, and the run of the offense, too. This, this, this isn't just handed off tackle and let's punt. This, this is running the Alabama offense. Hand off, up church, up the gut, inside the 45. We send it down to the sidelines. One of Bama's greatest football players, joined by perhaps the university's greatest golfer. Barry? Hey, I'll tell you this. I was just walking around. I was looking for some, uh, you know, celebrities, and I found one on the sideline. You know, uh, when I was playing with Coach Bryant at breakfast before the game, pregame, there was a blonde-haired kid that Coach Bryant used to bring in, and I didn't know who he was, and they said a guy named Jerry Pate, and all of a sudden, you know, he was on the sideline all the time, but Jerry, uh, we haven't seen you on the sideline lately. Well, I had to play golf last year on the Champions Tour, but I had surgery on my knee and my shoulder about six weeks ago. I'm going to make a lot of games and a big difference in this team this year. Yeah, and a big part of it is Nick Saban. You've been playing some golf with him? Well, I did his golf tournament this summer here in, T in Tuscaloosa, Nick's uh, kids, and uh, met Nick and Terry, got to know him, and uh, he's a class act. What do you think about the impact that Nick has brought to this uh, Alabama football program? Well, first thing I noticed is just the, the whole acumen on the sideline. The players are, are more reserved. They're focused. They're paying attention to their game. You don't see guys complaining to other players. It was uh, kind of stoic almost when uh, I came down on the sideline. So he's got the guys under control. I, I, I met one of the refs or talked to one of the refs that I knew that, that played football at Georgia. I've known for a while, and he said he's seen a big difference as well. He said they're ready to play in their uh, discipline. And that's what it takes, as you know, Barry. It takes discipline to play this game. Awesome. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you. All right, that's it. there you go. A great one from Alabama, Jerry Pate. Um, by the way, I'm going to, I'm ready to play him, Chris. Uh, I think my game has come around. What do you think? I think he would help. <laughs> oh, you mean help me? Yeah. I, I don't know. I was going to take him. I was going to give him a couple strokes. In, in that golf tournament for Coach Saban, he, he stepped up on a par three and wanted to hit a trick shot. He said, well, hit it left-handed. Of course, Jerry, a right-hander. He said, uh, I'll hit it, I'll turn the club around. I said, you don't have to do that. I gave him my seven iron. He knocked it in 10 feet with my, own, with my own golf club. That's just unfair. Alabama on second down and 10, getting inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Up church again on the carry. I'll tell you what, good things always seem to happen when Jerry Pate is on the sidelines. If I'm not mistaken, Jerry Pate was on the sidelines, Barry, when you and your teammates had the goal line stand in the Sugar Bowl. Am I correct? Yeah, it's really funny. He said, uh, uh, I was up in the suites a couple years ago, you know, and all of a sudden Jerry 
Jerry wanted to uh, have a little flashback with me. And he said, Barry, I was there. I was on the goal line. He said, ever since I won the U.S. Open, Coach Bryant would actually enter, you know, in invite me to be on the sideline. He said, man, I went all the way down to the goal line. I was there. I saw you stop him on the goal line. It was kind of funny because here's a great, obviously a great golfer, great, uh, you know, one of the mis most historic guys that ever played PGA Tour. And here he's telling me that, you know, he was there watching me play, and uh, what a great, great guy. And uh, it's a lot of fun to be around somebody like him and, and know that he went to the University of Alabama. No question. Will Oakley with his first catch of the year. By the way, sticking with the golf theme, his dad works for the PGA Tour. That is the ninth receiver to make a grab for the Crimson Tide in this ball game. McElroy with time comes it off. That certainly would have been the tenth, but he tried to turn it up the field before he had it in his hand. The way that the blocking downfield was starting to pan out with Hanks and others downfield, and he, he probably would have had an opportunity for a touchdown. What McElroy certainly looked comfortable, hasn't he? He has. He, he stands in the pocket with a lot of presence. He doesn't get rattled. He steps up, but always keeps his legs up underneath him. He's always ready to throw the football. Will Oakley in the slot. Darius Hanks to the bottom of your picture. Up church, the lone setback. McElroy will hand it off to number five, and he will get inside the 10-yard line. That's going to bring up third and about a yard. Tied again, knocking on the door. Yeah, just right off tackle this time. Able to get up in the secondary once again, run through a couple of arm tackles, make it all the way to the safety. One more quick note on Jerry Pate. He is not just on the sidelines for Alabama Athletic Program. He has been a major contributor with his time, his talent, and other resources to help build the golf program. He's been a great assistant to Jay Sewell as a friend of the program. It's a big reason why Alabama has one of the top golf programs in America now as Upchurch tries to get the first down yardage, and that's going to be awfully close. Pins on the spot, I believe. Nope, they'll give it to him right there inside the 10. First and goal from there. Another new lineman check into the ball game for Alabama. It'll be Barrett Jones seeing action for the first time on the offensive line. Jones, 6'5", 280, a freshman out of Evangelical Christian School in Memphis. There you see big number 75 as the tide broke the huddle. He's in at left tackle now. One of the tight ends I failed to mention earlier for Alabama, also in there, number 85, Preston Dial. Give up church. He is knocked down as he gets a yard, maybe two on the play. The clock ticks under nine and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. Still not a bad game, though, on first and goal. Picked up about two or three yards. Up church just running hard, bounced off of Baron Huber there, the fullback, trying to provide some space for him to run through. Alabama now 507 yards of total offense while holding the Hilltoppers to just 153. Give up church inside the five and not much beyond there. Ball may have come loose at the end of the play. I believe it did, and now they'll scramble. Let's see, he comes out of the pile with it. And the second turnover the night by the Crimson Tide. Fumble recovered by the Hilltoppers, and they'll take over outside their own five-yard line. Hard to know exa exactly when it happened. Baron Huber doing a nice job right there at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Trap Kyle water. Anderson knocked it loose with number 96. Alabama over 500 yards of total offense for the first time since the Tennessee game a year ago. Tide won that one big. They lead this one by a large margin here in Tuscaloosa tonight. Nick Saban still coaching. Crimson Tide still playing hard, but unfortunately, after an impressive drive, Tyler turning it over inside the red zone. That is the first time we've seen him do that this year. Yeah, not a good not a good place to turn the ball over going in for the score. Second unit had worked hard to get down there. Definitely hate to see it put on the ground, but it gives an opportunity for the defense to come in and make another play. Check things out. See how many new faces we see in the on the defensive side for Alabama. A lot of newcomers 
on the offensive line. And again, not a perfect game, but a dominating performance by Alabama in this one. And therefore, you're able to see a lot of new faces. There is a familiar face. Haven't seen him thus far this year, but number 21, Prince Hall, had a three-game suspension put upon him coming into this year by head coach Nick Saban. He said, you know what? You've done everything we've asked, your attitude, your effort, your performance. I'll take one of those games away, one of those suspension games away. And so he is back after a two-game suspension. You know he is excited to be there at middle linebacker for the Crimson Tide. Potential to be fantastic. As the give goes to the left side. And Bobby Rainey on the carry. Picks up five yards on the play. Hilltoppers still with a lot of football to go this year. Of course, they've got a game next week at home against Murray State out of the OVC. And then they'll travel to Lexington to take on the Kentucky Wildcats on the 27th. That is a week before Alabama will catch the Wildcats. Quite a hit delivered by Prince Hall. Welcome to 2008, number 21. A little slow getting up out that one, too. I think he might have, <laughs> I don't know if he stung his shoulder or what. There he is in the middle of your screen there, recognizing the play. Nobody comes up to block him, steps up and fills the hole nicely. Hopefully, that was just cobwebs. It was one heck of a hit. He does appear to be the worst for wear. Three of 11 on third downs tonight for the Hilltoppers. Wolke rolling the pocket. Check that. He is out of the ball game. That is Brandon Smith in at quarterback, number 12, the six-foot junior for the Hilltoppers. Smith, six feet out of Danville, Kentucky's Boyle County High School. And they're unable to pick up the first down. See Alabama's head athletic trainer, Jeff Allen, to the left there of Hall. And boy, that is, that is just disgusting to see. Here he is, had the suspension lifted, two plays, and he has to exit due to injury. But hopefully he'll be all right. It's not like he hadn't been hitting during the course of practice for the last month and a half. Marquise Mays, a chance to return one, makes two guys miss. With the third and fourth, we're able to corral him and bring him down at the 47-yard line. So the freshman from Tarrant gets a return, and Alabama has the ball again. Let's we'll see what they can do with it when we come back to the capstone. Saw Marquise Mays return that punt just moments ago. Clearly, Javier Arenas there, number 28, is done for the night. You remember, he got knocked out of the game in the third quarter last week. He was quoted this week as saying, I wanted to go back in, but I had to take the proper precautions. And they took my helmet. <laughs> That's about the only way to keep that guy out of the ball game. But glad that he just had a mild helmet. concussion. I wonder how much he offered to bar somebody else's. <laughs> well, glad they got him back and glad to see him play very well, not only in the return game, but seven tackles also tonight. That's a career best for Arenas at the cornerback slot. And again, the DB has got a lot of chances tonight, played as many as five and six at times. As against this spread offense of Western Kentucky, the Bama defense looked awfully good. Greg McElroy back out there at quarterback for his second series. B.J. Scott in the slot to the top of your screen. And flags come in. Likely a procedure penalty against the tie. Prior to the snap, ball start. 85 on the offense, 35 yards. Down remains the game. Not the way Preston Dial wanted to have his name called, but the youngster at tight end whistled for the flag. Sophomore out of UMS Wright, Adam Mobile, 6'3". 245. He kind of started, he's among those that started the migration north from Mobile. 
following year, Bama got a lot of commitments and signees. As Nick Saban and his staff really honed in on that region of the state. Some great talent out of there. It's great to see those guys wearing crimson. It is also extremely nice to see the work that was done on the recruiting trail, paying dividends on the football field for this program. Yeah, it is. And you're seeing the young talent. Anytime you bring talent in, though, it pushes the, the upperclassmen to get better as well. Dial with the grab, his first of the year. McElroy completes another one. It'll be third down and about five for Alabama from there. I tell you, any anytime that you can move the tight end to the middle of the field and have accuracy throw into him, it really puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Linebackers can't get back in those curl routes or get depth like they'd like to. for Coach Terry Curtis down at UMS Wright. Great program in the Mobile area. McElroy, three of five passing for 53 yards so far. As they go on the handoff, Huff Church, first down yardage and more. Keeps his feet inside the 30 and down to about the 27. Also glad to see him get some more carries after the fumble inside the 10. Yeah, and, and you know he wanted the ball back. He wanted another opportunity to redeem himself. He does exactly that. Gets him some space right here. A lot of open field in the fist. Makes some guys miss. Tucks that ball away. He's not going to fumble it again. 14 yards on the pickup. As McElroy is out. And the third quarterback of the night will check in. That's Thomas Dara, who will see action. A walk-on for Alabama. Redshirt freshman out of Noonan, Georgia. 6'6", 212. He's number 16. He'll hand it off to Upchurch. Who will keep the legs churning and gain three yards on the play as the clock ticks under five minutes to go in this one. It's been all Alabama from the start. Western Kentucky University went three and out on its first series. The Bama offense then marched down the field. Touchdown drive that was capped by an eight-yard run by Mark Ingram. A tiffin out of field goal. Ingram tacked on another score. Terry Grant, an eight-yard touchdown run, and the halfs ended scoring-wise with John Parker Wilson connecting with Nick Walker for two yards on the play. Demetrius Good in the ball game. He'll get his first carry as he hurdles the pile and gets to the 20-yard line. It'll be third and short from there. Good with a nice carry. Redshirt freshman out of LaGrange, Georgia, Hargrave Military Academy. He's 5'10", 190. As we said, Bama scoring. Had a 31-7 lead at the half as we look at the higher hurdles again. No hole there, so he just goes over the top. Too many to go through. Takes too long to go around, so he just went over the defenders. Tiffin, a 25-yard field goal. John Parker Wilson to Julio Jones, a 12-yard strike. That's been Bama's scoring this evening. As, again, Goode on the carry. And it will be fourth down for Alabama. See if the tie will go for it or if they'll opt to try a field goal here. Fourth and a yard, and it looks like the tide will indeed go for it. Plenty of time here. You just want to run the clock down as much as you can. Try to pick up the first down. Not interested so much in scoring as just getting these plays. Dara. On fourth of the yard. The give to Goode. Nearing the first down mark that he got there to the 15. Talk about the impact that this game will have on practice Monday. I'm not talking about the final score, but I'm talking about Alabama being able to go this deep into its roster in terms of players seeing action. Well, you think about it. Had, had Alabama gone two weeks in a row where it was a close ball game, now you're starting to create a little doubt as to what this offense would have been capable of, of doing versus Arkansas. But, but here coming out being sharp throughout the first three and a half quarters, it's been very impressive. I think it's going to build on their confidence, and they should have a great week of practice. Good on the carry. Looking down, we see some other new faces. Tough luck for Prince Hall, Barry. What's the latest on him? Well, the trainers worked on him a little bit, and uh, they officially said he got the wind knocked out of him. So that means, uh, as a football player, he'll be back out on the field. That is very good news. It may hurt, but 
you can work on that. I mentioned Chris Jackson in the ball game, wide receiver number 19. Also seeing action, Brandon Gibson for the first time. Another Mobile native. As the give to Goo, he'll change directions, get inside the 10. And you'll have another third and short upcoming as they'll spot the ball near the eight yard line. Alabama's just going to keep it vanilla, stay on the ground right here. Just great vision, able to make cut back a little bit, get up in that seam. Motley, among others, able to create a little running room. New faces also in the game at wideout for Alabama. As Good will take the handoff and get driven back near the 10. Those new receivers in the game, by the way. Robert Ezell at one wideout. Sam Snyder also into the contest. And again, Bama will go for it on fourth and a couple with under a minute to go. Not trying to run up the score, but just give some guys some valuable snaps. 554 yards in total offense tonight is good. Bounces it outside, kept his feet, got the first down, and that should do it. Bama will keep possession. They won't add to the point total, but they'll have a chance to run the clock, and Bama will not have to snap the football again. Yeah, great vision once again, bouncing it to the outside. Great blocking up front. Looks like Tyler Love in there. Picking up another first down. That should be it. Yep. Play clock is dark. Game clock is at 17 seconds. And I don't think they'll even break huddle. Tyler, what an effort from Alabama tonight. Great job. Came back. They, they, they had good focus throughout the course of the game. Did things that they needed to and improve upon last week's performance. Defense really started off, though, very impressed with them. Even though Bama scored just 10 points in the second half, I thought they were as dominant in the second half as they were in the first. They were. They could have scored another 30 points, but they called the first teamers out, put them on the sideline, give, give the second teamers those. Well, we don't have depth charts here, but give the other guys some opportunities to get in there and get some experience.